Welcome to Watch, Review, Repeat. This is the podcast where two best friends discuss the latest in film and television and then do it all over again the following episode. My name is Colton Brown and joining me on another bonus episode is Andrew Meadows. Me, Andrew. (laughs) Bonus episode 34. (laughs) We're not here to talk like cave people. We're here to talk like apes. Uh, sophisticated apes. I mean, you know, if, we, if we're here long enough, then, then our speech patterns are going to start sounding suspiciously human. Unless we start Unless. going the other way. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll say, yeah, I guess if we're, if we're really trying to be humans in this, this world, then uh, we're going to sound <laughs> a lot like... <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, anyway, yes, we are here on bonus episode number 34 for the Planet of the Apes trilogy, which, you know, there's a lot of Planet of the Apes movies out there. Uh, many people are probably aware of that fact, but we are covering very specifically those three recent Planet of the Apes movies. Um, of course, really led by Andy Serkis as Caesar, as the ape Caesar. Caesar. Um, Uh, Which includes Rise of the Planet of the Apes, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, and War for the Planet of the Apes. Very long mouthfuls of titles, but uh, but there they are, Um, and it's uh, and it's exciting. We're we're you know we're we're stepping away from uh, the the epics that we focused on for for a good chunk of last year. I think it's the first, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's the first bonus episode we're actually doing in 2024 entirely. Um, And that's the uh, first one we've done in a long time. That's a that's a. A, a, an ip you know what yeah I mean? right yeah this is this is kind of a return to um a more traditional style of bonus episodes for us where we you know we pick a series of movies a period you know something like that or something that um that tied together that made sense to cover together pick a few movies do them all at once you know so that's kind of what we're doing here three movies not one like we've been doing with those epics but three also felt like a manageable number you know um so uh so we made it we are a little bit later yeah, you know, I think I could probably bear some responsibility for that because I, I took I took my sweet time uh, watching these movies. But uh, once I started, I, uh, I I went through them pretty quickly. To be fair, um, but uh, but yeah, it's really exciting because basically what we're doing, and and I can say as of recording this, and then obviously as a result, by the time this is up for both our supporters on Patreon and uh, for the regular listeners a little bit later, um, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is already out. The brand new movie that is continuing the story from these three movies but many many years in the future um that's the inspiration that's why we're doing uh the planet of the apes trilogy right now is because um it's now a quadrilogy sort of yeah i mean i think this is still somewhat a standalone trilogy is it okay um, but the fourth one is very much in the same world as this but i think there is a several hundred year time jump so you know it's it's connected while still feeling separate and and kind of independent in its own in its own way too, so so yeah, um, so that's why we're here to talk about Planet of the Apes, and that's why we're very specifically focusing on just these three, is because those are the three that are connected to Kingdom, whereas the other original five are kind of its own thing. You know, I think most people like to forget about it, um, but uh, but we, we the, the Tim Burton Planet of the Apes does in fact exist. The Marky With Mark Marky Planet Mark? of the Apes, yes, we, it does exist. But the, we are we are not here talking about that. That could uh, you know, if we get bored in a, in a year or two, we can go back to the originals. We can go back to the Marky Mark one. Um, I think it goes like back five, in time. five, five, five originals, and then six. Yeah, that one's got a lot of weird time travelly shit going on. It's. Uh, I haven't seen it in a while. You know, I'm not. We don't need to get into it, obviously, because we're not talking about it like actually here. Um, but I'm my trying to, I'm trying like, to pull us to talk about. It. I, I want to. I always, I always think about it, and I'm like, you know, like I feel like the makeup and stuff. I recall being like really good, and like I don't. And if it, like it's it in my head, yeah. it's not so bad. But then I think about it, and I'm like, oh yeah, but it's got Mark Wahlberg as the lead, and he's like an astronaut. I'm like, oh yeah, that does sound pretty trash, doesn't it? So. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll go back to it at some point and, 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 and you know, see if that thought is true, if it if it is better in my head or worse in my head. I don't, I'm not really sure. Um, he does fall I've never in love seen with the ape. all of the originals either. I, I, I have to confess. I've only seen, uh, I think, maybe two or three of them. Um, 
So I have a big old box set. I have a Blu-ray box set that's got like the 3D thing of the of the, of the ape's head. Um, but uh, but I but I still haven't actually busted out all the discs in that set to watch it. So, um, but I have seen I have seen the three that we're talking about on this episode: uh, Rise, Dawn, and War. I, I've seen them previously, and I watched them again for this episode. So, uh, so we're going to get into those movies uh, in just a short amount of time. Before we do so, I do want to. Just set set the stage for like what what a bonus episode is for anyone who is just happening to be uh, hop on hopping on board for this episode and hasn't listened to a prior bonus episode. Um, we do these uh, in a in a in a manner that's a little different from our standard bonus episode where we're not going to do news. We're not going to. I mean, we do a little bit of fluff up the top clearly, um, but we try to keep things uh, pretty dialed in to just talking about the movies themselves uh, in a way that we don't do with our normal episodes. I guess sometimes. Um, so we're just going to hop right into the three movies. And the big thing about it is it's a timed exclusive episode uh, for our supporters on Patreon. So for those of you who are listening to this early, because you're a supporter on Patreon, we, of course, want to thank you for your support. Thank you for listening. And if you're not a supporter on Patreon and you're listening to this on the regular feed, um, totally cool. We appreciate your support, not, you know, all the same. Um, but if you do want to get early access to all future bonus episodes, all future regular episodes, you can get early access to those as well through Patreon. Uh, just head over to patreon.com slash watch your view repeat. Uh, we have one tier. It's $2 a month and it gets you uh, access to everything, basically. You know, it's, it's anything and everything you could want for, for, for the watch your repeat, you know, early access train, I guess. Um, so uh, we, we, we keep it low so that it's, you know, affordable for people and uh, we try to tr- try to make it worthwhile for for anyone that does want to help us out on patreon that can't afford to do so um but of course podcasting as a medium uh typically tends to be free so so we certainly understand if, if that's not of interest to you and you want to wait a little while to enjoy things we don't hold it against you no it's cool it. we it's get cool. it so uh i actually have a fun fact you know this is a little untraditional usually our traditional bonus episodes we will you know, just go straight into the movies. But I do have a fun fact. So a little extra fluff for this particular bonus episode. Um, I have a fun fact uh, between, I guess, really about the relationship between this podcast and uh, this this thing that we're talking about, the Planet of the Apes trilogy, oh. which you might think, you know, we've done 250 plus episodes or whatever it's up to now. Um, and we really haven't talked about any of these movies, right? You know, we've never covered any of these movies particularly, which is certainly why we're coming back and doing it now. Um, but we actually, I should say, I actually have talked about one of these movies very, very specifically. Uh, and I think I might have mentioned this at some point, you know, in, in the past, you know, relatively recently within the past year or two, I would guess. Um, but if you turn your clock, if you turn your calendar, flip your calendar back to August 8th, 2017, we dropped our very, very first episode. Andrew chipped his tooth in the theater watching oh, The Dark, Dark Tower. Tower. But we also covered a movie called Atomic Blonde, which is pretty cool. Um, it's pretty cool. You know, pretty, pretty cool movie. Banging soundtrack. Plays For well sure. on vinyl, I must say. No. Um, but uh, about an hour into that episode, on our very, very first ever catching up section, I talked about a movie called War for the Planet of the Apes. So if you want to do a little time capsule thing like I did, I went back to listen to, you know, I'd, I I had watched War again at that point. I had formulated my thoughts on what I wanted to say. And, you know, obviously that's what we're here to do. I'll get into that shortly. But I, but I you know, I wanted to hear what I thought back in 2017. Um, and uh, yeah, I had, I had watched War for the Planet of the Apes just, just a few weeks before recording that episode. And uh, I have to say... I don't like how I sound, like like physically. Like I hadn't developed my podcast voice yet, you know. Like you have to have like a radio announcer voice, and like clearly, it took me some time to figure it out because I was just very timid and kind of one note. And I don't even know. I don't even know if that's quite right. Um, you you sounded like you. You you you've had it from day one. Um, oh, oh but, that's fabulous. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, uh, I shared some thoughts on War for the Planet of the Apes all the way back on episode one. So so we'll find out if you're back, in line, right? almost seven years um you know it, it's 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 been building to this moment you know we're coming full circle with this bonus episode we've been doing here. it for seven years almost just about knocking on the door wow um, yeah, and and come come august just to just just about three months away from uh, as of recording about three months we'll we'll, we'll mark uh, 
seven years, seven years of uh, podcast, and which is uh, which is pretty nuts, obviously pretty when, you, when you think about it that way. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I talked about it then. If anyone wants to hear some old school Colton thoughts on that, uh, check out Watch Review Repeat Episode One: Atomic Blonde slash The Dark Tower E and zero zero that's, one. That's that's not all. If you want to check out Episode Twenty Four. Uh, which came out February of 2018, we did our very, very first A Year in Review set of episodes. So on part two of 2017, A Year in Review, um, uh, I talked about War for the Planet of the Apes in a couple categories. Wasn't it? It was featured in the art. We had had old Caesar face uh, on the... It was the the right, the, the blade all the way to the right. We had Dunkirk, Last Jedi, Shape of Water... Blade Runner 2049, God, Baby Driver. What a year for freaking movies that was. That's yep, nuts. Yep, yep. And we had War for the Planet of the Apes in there as well, which... It scored very highly, just, if I remember right. With, uh, for I, I I marked it as my best visual effects, and I and I marked it for best actor. So uh, so that's 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 the praise it got for me. It somehow didn't get into my honorable mentions. I don't know if we were like really trying to limit ourselves back in the day. These days, we're just like thirty four honorable mentions. If we have them, that's fine. Who cares? We make the rules. It doesn't matter. We'll be here for seven hours regardless. Just just keep going. Um, <laughs> I'll just yeah. cut it into six episodes if I need to. It's fine. I don't need a life. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was a pretty good year. Um, I think you picked Blade Runner for best visual effects, uh, which is also very valid. Uh, obviously, I think it was it was you know, even, even even from the early days. I think I was doing a nice spread the love sort of thing. Of uh, you know, Blade Runner was going to be my number one of the year, so it probably had to you know give something else special. I, I, it was a year where Blade Runner could have won every fucking award. I it's mean, quite true. literally, I think. Yeah. So so I think I think that was probably what it came down to. But anyway, yeah. All the way back from uh, the early days, we talked about well, I talked about the Planet of the Apes. Um but now you get to join the conversation too. And we get to have a dialogue about these movies, which is very very exciting. So we'll, do you want to do you want to get into things? Let's do it. Let's things? dive right in, man. All right. So, um like I said, we're skipping past those other Planet of the Apes movies for now. Maybe we can swing back to them around, you know, swing back around to them. Who's who's to say? Um, but but uh, but we're gonna move over to Rise of the Planet of the Apes. We're gonna go to August fifth, twenty eleven, when this movie made its way to theaters. Yeah. Um, Rise of the Planet of the Apes was written by Amanda Silver and Rick Jaffa. Directed by Rupert Wyatt. Stars James Franco, Frida Pinto, John Lithgow, Brian Cox. Tom Felton, David Oyelowo, and Andy Serkis. A um, substance designed to help the brain repair itself gives advanced intelligence to a chimpanzee, Caesar, who leads an ape uprising. Uh, obviously, this is a movie that is now over a decade old. Uh, we are going to be doing full spoilers for all of these movies. So if I forget to remind you before we start talking about those other movies, this is my fair warning for all of it. These, these movies are... Well, even even the most recent one is, as I said, uh, about seven years old. So, um, so everyone's been warned. Full spoilers are fair game here, and we're going to get into it. And uh, and and why don't I start with with asking you, what's your what's your background? Did you see Rise back in the day? What, like, what's what's your history with this? I did. Uh, I actually saw the Marky Mark, not to like you know try to pull us back into that direction. But I, Mark, you really want to talk about it? Did you rewatch it for this episode? I you, did not you know, rewatch it, sneak? but I watched it a lot. Okay. It was, it, was a, um, it was a childhood staple. A childhood staple for sure. So is that so, all right? Well, then maybe we could start with just is that your Planet of the Apes? Like that was affinity? my intro That's to the Planet of the Apes, right? Sure. Okay. Um, and I watched it a lot. It had sci-fi stuff. It had cool makeups, you know, and uh, it was I mean, it was just a sci-fi movie, and it had some crazy stuff. It had it had apes in like Roman Roman armor, which is kind of crazy. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of crazy stuff. I don't remember it. I, I don't remember it very well. I just remember watching it a lot. Um, fast forward, you know, uh, 2011. Uh, I am in 11th grade. No, no, we're 10. I just graduated high school, right? Yes, That's you right. are. You are. You, you're. You're out of high school at this. I'm point. I'm out of high school at this point. Um, I think oh, cool. class of 2010. Yeah. So I just graduated when this came out, uh, and. Uh, this is like an earth-shattering movie when this came out. Um, I I, re- I remember being, uh, I remember enjoying this movie a lot. Um, I you know I I enjoyed the Marky Mark, and now I'm watching this one, and the, and this is all mocap, and this is you know it's Andy Circus. Yeah, and- very 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 different from both the original 
and the Marky Mark in the sense that we got CGI apes now, right? You know, and oh, yeah. they look they don't look like people in makeup anymore. No. And they're, not even, like they're, they're trying to they're trying to make them look like, you know, completely realistic. Yeah. Very different. And um I remember the heart in this movie. Uh, this movie has a lot of heart. Um, fast forward to today, you know, uh, I am uh, many years removed from high school now. And um, this is true. <laughs> and uh, you know what? It still has a lot of heart. Yep. Uh, if okay. anything, I actually identify more with this uh, with this movie now. Oh, because uh, you're a dad. Yeah. Because you're a dad. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> man, oof. It uh, it really it really punched me in the feels. Uh, Sarah okay. got to the point where yeah. she didn't want to fucking watch it. She got upset. Um, yeah. I'm not watching. Well, there's this definitely movie. there's definitely some. Uh, I think we, I think we I think because you, you've actually talked about I guess both these movies because you were a bit more diligent with your your movie watching than I was. So you've talked about both Rise and Dawn a little bit on previous episodes leading up to this. But I think you mentioned that the the, the animal cruelty aspects of Rise particularly did not play well with Sarah. No, no. She's like, I don't understand why this, why this, you know, let's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's troubling, right? It makes yeah, you, it makes you just vis- really mad. You know, you get upset yeah. watching it. Um, it's like, I mean, guardians was the same way. Guardians volume three, it was oh. just all the rocket stuff was just horrible to watch. And it's like, you know, we can watch people get horribly maimed and blown to high hell and Shogun, but when fucking animals, you know, get, get harmed, even fake animals or, you know, fictional monstrosity animals. Nothing makes you hate just, another person more. It's just than something than someone it's just hurting inhumane. an animal. Yeah, you exactly. Know? It is inhumane. You're a twisted, sick individual. <laughs> You're you know? a sick son of a bitch. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, it's, uh, you know, even like when you hear about it in the news and stuff, I don't yeah. think, I don't think I ever feel yeah, you got the the got amount the, of to, anger not, that I not feel. to get political with these things, but the was it the South Dakota governor is just like, yeah, I killed my dog, and it's like, the fuck is wrong with you, yeah, right? Oh. Like, like, is that supposed to make you approachable or make people like you? Like, I think that everyone thinks you're a fucking villain now, right? You know, like again, like I think regardless of your stance on most things, you know, politically, like Man. that's horrible. So you know. Anyway, that's not the point. Not the point. I, I specifically, I'm thinking about, of the, but, I'm thinking of it, the dolphins and the sharks that those kids were fucking with uh, a few oh, years back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. like, what are you doing? Like, why? You yeah, know, like, what, oh, man. What's, what, like, how, how, where, how did you go so wrong with your moral compass that you think that that's okay to do? You know? And, the, oh, and, no. the, and the, like, anytime you go anywhere and somebody's got a dog chained to a tree. Um, yeah. and. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. Uh, <laughs> Sarah, Sarah got very uh, that that got her, uh, you know, yeah. feeling mm-hmm. a particular way. Uh, I also feel a particular way, but I identify with Caesar in this movie when he feels a particular way. Uh, you know, it's, yeah, it's. I mean, it is eliciting a very specific type of emotional response because it wants you to feel sympathy for Caesar and his plight and the plight of his fellow apes who are being mistreated so that then you know when the third act arises you know no or right or good lord arises when the third act comes around mm-hmm. and you know maybe the shitty humans that are mistreating these animals get some of comeuppance it's, it's, it's like it's like um, satisfying you know it speaks volumes about uh caesar's humanity you know mm-hmm. and um which is I don't know. It's a really nuanced story, right? And the, the, the story beats and whatnot. Like you say, it elicits a certain response. It's very deliberate in that. Um, but it makes, uh, it, it speaks volumes about the characterization, right? Because he's given the option to go home. You can go right. home. Yeah. You can go home. Yeah. And that's all he's wanted. He's pissed that he has to be in this cage. It's heart wrenching to watch him earn, like just his heart aches to go home, you know? And he draws the window. Yeah, he draws which the window, fucking, right? Yep. Oh, just and then when he races it, oh man, I was just kind of sobbing there in the it's not in the movie theater no, on the couch. It's like, oh, we well, might is, you might have been back in the day too. I don't know. Or I was in the movie theater. Yeah, now, no, it's true. Uh, it, it's just uh, there's there's a there's I mean there's a lot of there's a lot of heart there, you know, and um, yeah, and and so when he's given the choice, go back home or stand for something he stands for something you know and he liberates these other apes not only does he liberate them but he gives them the gift of intelligence too which is fucking profound you know um i mean 
Caesar's kind of. I mean, he, he has he has he has some help from James Franco it's of getting you know obviously the, the fucking, if you will you know uh, right yeah but 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 Caesar's really the one that begins you know this Planet of the Apes you know with by yeah. by taking this drug and and then spreading it so that they can all kind of have the ability to, to think and I guess eventually speak like him as well so yeah and it's uh it's it's uh. You know, it's fascinating, too, because, I mean, he was raised by very good people, you know? Uh, mm-hmm. He's able to discern that people aren't all the same, you know? And he tries to... Well, I think maybe I might try to, like... I'm, I'm, I think I'm starting to dive into the second movie. Well, um, I, I was going to say, is I think the second movie does a very good job, again, we're, I'm jumping ahead as well, of showing what is it like when you're maybe not raised in the best of circumstances, you know, and, yeah. and, 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 and what does that mean? So it's very, I guess it is a commentary, which is true, I guess of, I mean, the humanity versus apes, you know, is obviously a through line of these movies, but it is kind of a commentary on, on nature versus nurture in some ways, you know, where, and in this movie is very much, I think a commentary on like, you know, you're, you're, you know, you, you live, you grow up and, or you, you know, you start to grow up and then you're, you know, as you, as you start to mature and you start to learn, uh, that there's, you know, injustices and stuff, you know, you do yeah. something, right. you know? Yeah. Um, you have the power and the, I guess, capacity and if you and know, if you have to the do capacity something. to know, then you right. have the responsibility yeah. you, to do you, something. You, you are, you are now sentient. You can recognize, yeah. you know, mistreatment, shittiness, injustice for what it is and and yeah and you know it's a really hey, effective it out, commentary it's very good you it's know very... i mean chimpanzees are, are just naturally much stronger than humans you know so you can use that to great effect mm-hmm. um like maybe if you're off a, if, yeah pretty good at that you recruit a gorilla to your cause maybe that'll help yeah. maybe that'll help matters you know what i mean um get this fucking crazy bonobo you know under your wing <laughs> or this or or, or or fucking coba in this movie man even Early days, Koba is Koba's clearly an asset primal. to have on your yeah. side. Yeah, you know, dude's just just pure aggression, basically. Um, yeah. So, uh, so, so you like Rise? Is what I'm gathering. I like you Rise like a lot. Movie. Yeah, it's a. I think it's a very it holds effective. up on a rewatch. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, you can. Um, I think that. Um, you know, you you had. Uh, I mean, Andy Serkis was in a little movie called Lord of the Rings, where he also did some early days some mocap. mocap. Top stuff, yeah. Um, I think that this movie is, uh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that it was a natural evolution from from mocap and Lord of the Rings to mocap and this. I can't think of anything really in between. When did uh, when did uh, mm. Avatar come out? Uh, Avatar was 2009, so I okay. mean, obviously that did. I think that this did represent a an evolution, evolution and yeah. in, in in the way that the mocap effects could be achieved because i think avatar is a lot of it's on sound stages and the way that it's done um this i believe if, if i'm not mistaken i think from what i was reading about this is the first time that they were able to use like performance capture technology in exterior locations on location. so you could have you know these shots if you know i don't know if they were actually shooting in san francisco or, or you know in, in the nearby jungle but wherever they actually did film they could have the performers on set Obviously, you know, in the suits with the dots and everything on the faces and everything to capture all that that performance data, um, but they could do it on location. They didn't have to do it separately and drop them in later or do everything on a soundstage and have it try to pass for, um, you know, a forest yeah, location. Right, right, like right. They, they could just do it kind of on the spot, which was which was novel. You know, uh, look, I'm reading it now. Um, yeah, they have a camera. They had a camera that, which was newly implemented that could capture the motion capture dots in daylight. Um, they could capture up to six actors in any given like shot. So they could have multiple. That's a lot of tracking for, information you know, for a decade ago. Yeah. I mean, yeah, right. Over a decade ago now, yeah. you know, especially given when it was would have been shot, too. So it's funny that so, we go yeah, from I mean, uh, we go from breaking technology they used in this. We go from that to the volume. So now we're going back. <laughs> we're going back to the soundstage. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sort of. Anyways, but uh, yeah, uh, I remember it being a groundbreaking film. I mean, for for you know CG and and the industry, uh, and then uh, like I said, it, it really, it really, I don't know, just pulled at some heartstrings. Uh, mm-hmm. And yeah. I think it does an excellent job of s- like sewing the the you know um, 
it just it does an effective job of reinventing the IP. So, totally. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 so different from what came before, but it's still recognizably Planet of the Apes. That's right. You know, and and I think that if I'm not mistaken, it's a very think, effective beginning film. I mean, it's awesome. Like it's an incredible totally. beginning film. Totally. A lot of times you'll get this and just uh uh you'll get this whole story in in narrative dump in the beginning of like the dawn right, right, dawn right, yeah. of the planet of the apes or right you could have just jumped to dawn where things are a little further along but or you could the start from here minutes, where you know? you know the beginning of this movie there you know the planet of the apes doesn't exist it's the planet of the humans and then by the end it's still not quite really the planet of the apes but you're well on your way you know, um, something seismic happened. Like this is huge. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They just you took know, over the fucking something right. world changing has literally happened. It just hasn't happened yet. It hasn't had time to completely take effect and, 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 and perhaps irreparably change the world yet, but it will, uh, it will. Um, yeah. Um, I think, um, you know, I think what, what, what makes this work so well is it's using a lot of the, um, same touchstones as the original, like planet of the apes movie. You know, like it doesn't have, um, you know, the big twist reveal or anything like that in the way that the original did. Like it wasn't trying to just be a re. It wasn't trying to be a remake. I guess number one in any way. It was really trying to be. A Are you reboot. talking about the Marky Mark? No, no, no. This one, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Um, that one was very much. I feel like trying to be a. Not a, again. Not a. Not a. Oh, straight, I don't know anything about the original Planet remake. of the Apes at all. Okay. So. All right. Well, fair enough. All right. Fair enough. I mean, so I feel like the Marky Mark one was definitely intended to be. Not necessarily a reboot, not necessarily a remake, I guess somewhere in between where it was kind of just like, this is just like a new version of it. But I feel like it, it hewed a lot closer in terms of just the style of it. And then there was a twist at the end with, you know, he comes back to to Earth and it's Ape Lincoln, you know, like that sort of thing was like a riff on the original Planet of the Apes. Whereas here, they're not trying to do that same thing. There's like there's like moments in this, like there's a thing in like where like the shuttle, you know, gets launched and these astronauts are in space and like that's kind of like a pseudo setup for like what could happen that would be similar to the original planet of the apes where it's a group of astronauts who go into space and crash land somewhere and they find themselves on a planet of the apes. Like it's kind of alluding to something like that. Um, and it has like little things It has like lines of dialogue, you know, get your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape. That's just straight wholesale Charleston Heston from, from the original planet of the apes. So it has like these references okay. and like, like, like bits of nostalgia, which clearly work just fine if you don't know that they're from the original, um, but it, but it, it, it does feel like a good, like, um, I don't know, like it feels like a legacy sort of thing that isn't just, again, playing the greatest hits, which I think is kind of what you tend to get with some, like, like this is what the movie could have just been trying to do the same thing, but then doing it worse, which is really what the Marky Mark one kind of ended up being. Um, you know, there was a little, little things that they did differently there but on the whole it wasn't wholly successful this is just like a totally different direction and in its own sort of way where it's let's pull it back in time this is again before the planet of the apes let's focus on a guy let's focus on dr james franco um you know genetic or chemist you know super smart chemist i'm here to cure all bit of a scientist uh, myself james franco he's, he's something of a he's something of the son of a scientist <laughs> himself um although it, i don't know if his dad's actually a scientist in this one but he's a brilliant um, individual he can play piano he's, very he's, well he, yeah well that's true you know especially when he's uh when he's on alz 112 or whatever um but yeah it's it's just like this whole totally different thing of how did, how the fuck do you get to a planet of the apes? How does that happen? And I think it's a really interesting deconstruction of that idea of, well, it starts with just a you know a, a classic thing of humanity, you know, stretching themselves too far. You know, the the the, the Jeff Goldblum Jurassic Park thing. Yes, that, you know, I was no, no thinking one, the same. No, thing. no one always. You know, it's so never funny. stopped to ask. You know, if if they if they should or you know I've, I'm, I'm I'm blanking on the exact quote, but but you know what I mean. Um, yes. Someone listening probably knows what I mean too. Um, and it's a it's it's a really interesting way to kind of see that all play out of you know this ultra, I mean he has altruistic motives obviously the company he's working for has profit based motives and you know and you know if we can save some people's lives great if we can make millions and billions of dollars off it even better um, you know that sort of thing and then just seeing how you know the hubris of man basically leads yeah. to the complete downfall and of Icarus humanity. if you will to be my second Greek story. Yeah. 
like sure. reference for sure. the night. You're you're you're, you're kind of you're the, you're that you're the expert of that sort of uh, mythology. Well, here, I don't so. know. You you're married to. Well, here very, of the two of us, very... of the two of us, yeah. <laughs> of we the... bring in a, a <laughs> of the two of us. I, I I defer to you. Yeah, but Caesar is the Prometheus and mm-hmm. uh, James, Doctor James Franco. Yeah, uh, and then chapter uh, Doctor James Franco is the fucking Icarus. You know, he flew too close to the right. sun, and destroyed humanity. Yep. Yep. Oops. Whoops. Son Uh-oh. of a bitch. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I, I, oh, uh, never yeah, mind. Go ahead. That's, no, this go is ahead. for the second movie. Anyways, I'm sorry. <laughs> I uh, um, I have to say, I mean, just th- talking about this movie more broadly for myself, um, I actually really remember my theater experience with this, which which is awesome. It sounds like you did as well. Um, but I remember it vividly because uh, I was in college at the time, and uh, this was at the. I worked at a movie theater, but this was playing at the other movie theater in town, which was the same company, so I could get in and see things for free and everything like that. But I like really vividly remembering seeing this movie in theaters and just kind of just like like being kind of just like blown away by it because it was just like, oh, this is so cool, you know? Like this is a new generation for the Planet of the Apes, bringing in new people, new audiences and reinventing the franchise in such a unique and different way from anything the franchise had ever done before. And the moment that sold it all is like the most impactful moment in this movie. It's one of the most impactful cinematic moments I've participated in. And it is of course, no. Oh yeah. And and, and, screams it. Oh, and the the, bone chilling. (laughs) It's it's so good and like it's funny like I remembered it and I was just like oh man I just remember it was so quiet in the theater you could hear a pen drop and then when I rewatched it I was like oh no they fully pull out all the sound of that moment so they let you sit with it but you know it's like one of those things like if this movie came out in theaters right now knowing Anna and I's luck with fucking movie theaters you'd have you'd have a phone going off after he says no you'd have someone <laughs> you know s- sneezing or snorting You'd have someone having corn. a conversation in the corner. You'd have a very loud chomp of some corn on the cob. You know, like like people would ruin that fucking moment. No! You know, you'd have some sort of fucking horse shit moment. And, and what do you know? Back in 2011, people knew how to act. Um, <laughs> and so it was just that awesome moment of everyone just being like, oh shit. Because everyone, you know, and it's like, that's how, it's, it's, it's how everyone in the movie reacts. It's just like, they're all oh, the shit, same. It's the, all the same. That's universal that's, that's reaction, right. right? Yeah, like, like, oh my god, he just talked. He spoke, um, you know, and 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 so I just that moment, has, like, I, it's like a, just a pure classic cinematic <sighs> moment for this movie, which I think, you know, I think it's a movie that overall really holds up. I think it's very it entertaining. Does. It's very enjoyable, um, and it zips along nicely. It's mm-hmm. sub two hour. The other the other two movies I think are a little bit more. Um, a little bit longer, a little bit more meandering. Yeah, Actually, I take that yeah. back. They're not really meandering. I think well, they're I more so than this one. If nothing the, else. Yeah, I think they're a little bit longer, but I don't think meandering. They're different. The, the... They're different, and 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 that's okay. We'll get into that. You'll get into the fact that they're different and why that's okay. Um, but this this one, I think it I think it's really interesting, and it's really just just the way that it all kind of builds, and and you know, and and these moments where it's. You know, when Caesar's a baby and he's cute and it's just fun, you know, he's swinging around and it's just nice. And then it's not so nice when, you know, he, he attacks the neighbor who, who was a dickhead to be fair, but you know, he's Absolute not going to say right. it. Yeah. But at least his car got trashed, which was great. Good fun. Um, and then it get just the third act where shit hits the fan and they break out of the, you know, the, 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 I guess encampment or whatever they're, they're stuck at. And it's just chaos on the Golden Gate Bridge. Like, it's awesome. You know, you got fucking helicopters getting pulled down. You got gorillas, like gorillas. Pushing, flipping and pushing a bus. Yeah, pushing they're buses like, around. They're like linemen practicing for football, pu- pushing a yeah. fucking bus. It's incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it is inc- it's it's awesome. It is incredible. You know, All the apes underneath the bridge piece. swinging. Like okay, like you yeah. have a blockade on top of the bridge. We're yeah, gonna swing yeah. You got, we got one go under, one goes on top. Yeah, you have Caesar has like. Hey, that horse looks like a pretty good thing to to get around on. Let me try that. That out actually myself, made Sarah you know? laugh whenever whenever yeah. he, <laughs> whenever he came right through the fog. It's like, oh. uh, yeah, yeah, you know. But it wasn't like laughing because it was no. Like, oh, this it is was silly. It was, it was uh, like oh shit. She, I, I, you know, I feel like she doesn't do holy shit laughs like I do all the time. Okay, yeah, but but that maybe it's the equivalent of that. Perhaps it was a holy know. shit laugh. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, just just top to bottom, the movie 
it, it just I love the fact really, that he brought has really great payoff across the Golden Great. He brought he liberated the apes and then he escorted the the apes. Their escape to freedom was where he was brought as a little like as a little teenager, ape. right? Yeah, he he you know he knows what he knows, and so it's just like. Here's this a place, place to this is the swing place. around and be yourself, you know? You don't have to deal with these fucking shithead Ugh. humans. At least, hopefully, you know? Yeah. Maybe maybe at some point in, like, the next movie you might. But for now, you know, this this is this is, this is is home. Caesar is home. Oh, man, that, that fucking wrecked me. I did one of those... <laughs> one of those... <laughs> uh, one of those sniffle cries. <laughs> no, maybe not snorts, yeah. but, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You lose your breath a little bit. <laughs> Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's good though. I mean, and it's it's good really emotional, shit. and 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 I and I think that Caesar's evolution as a character here, is you know, obviously is 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 awesome. I mean, from from the beginning of just being you know a baby, obviously, and and you know, and, and the rapid and you know growth of intelligence to like like we you talked about a little bit already. You know, just this this recognition of you know he's he's like, am I a pet? You know, he has that moment, and then you know just recognizing how these other apes are treated and, and the fact that he has, you know, these other apes who are like him, you know, maybe they look different. You know, you got Maurice, Maurice, the fucking orangutan, um, fucking you Maurice, know, dude. Oh my goodness. Maurice is awesome. Started on fucking Maurice. Team Maurice. Um, <sighs> but, but like, it, it's so cool to see that evolution of him just recognizing I can do something else. Like, like Dr. James Franco, I love you. You are a good man. You're, you're, you know, you're my father, but I have to, I have to do my own thing. I have to become my own self. Ah, I have I have, I have a greater purpose now, oh. you know, and that's to, to to lead them, you know, and and so by the end, you know, when when and and I think it's just a really nice moment of recognition between the two of them, where where Doctor James Franco is just like, all right, I get it's a, it. It's a father you know? son thing, dude. It's exactly you know? what it is. So good. Go spread your wings, you know. So Me- good. metaphorically, you don't actually have wings. Um, maybe 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 in a few hundred years, maybe apes can grow <laughs> wings. They'll, they'll, they'll evolve to that. The uh, uh, turn into Wizard of Oz. The yeah. fun fact: uh, Planet of the Apes is actually within the same universe as Wizards of Oz. Oh, oh, um, anyways, uh, the um, oh, what was I going to say? I had I had something really good that really <laughs> uh, can't for, I can't remember now. Yeah, I, I thought it was a very special movie. This is a special movie out of nowhere. Uh, it's a reinvention of an IP that had not been reinvented. I guess it lasted almost a decade, right? When did Marky Mark come out? 2001, 99, 2001. Like that. Yeah, I think 2001, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. You know, so it lasted a decade. They reinvented it again, but it's more, it's, it's set in a more grounded place. And that's what I was going to say. How many, how many, um, how many properties can you think of that follow the full life of an individual? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, full life. No, yeah, I mean that's that's kind of say Star Wars, but even then, you know, you yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, I guess, 10, yeah, but Star Wars, I guess, does. And also, this is this is this is a better. Uh, it's more consistent and, i mean it's different i mean you know and, and you know spoilers obviously for the other one it's not like caesar suddenly turns into darth vader by by war he's not the bad guy or anything like that so it's a bit of a different uh i guess you have two saying, generations but, of people in star wars yeah uh, i mean but but even then i mean it's it's still a little bit different like you it's know, not as snappy I mean, you know i mean you no got... it's it's not as tight as this and it's not so it's almost not so singularly focused. Like, you know, right. you could say, I mean, you do see the birth of Luke Skywalker and you see the death of Luke Skywalker, but there's a lot of moments in between that you're missing. <laughs> Whereas right. I feel like this, I mean, obviously, granted, there's a huge time jump from from Rise to Dawn, but you really do seem to be getting the most pivotal moments. You know, like, obviously, you can't literally have every moment captured, but this one picks, you know, between, you know in, in going through all three of these movies, you have pretty much every big moment in caesar's life captured i think it's not it doesn't really gloss over you know the the bits that it glosses over are and they lived peacefully in the woods for a little while you know what i mean like that's yeah. that's kind of kind of, or you know something along those lines so um so uh yeah damn good movie um i i think i might levy one complaint i do, do think it. james franco is a little miscast you know i think that hey, he was picking up on a spider-man role i think yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, I, I, Is it I bad that, to say that I enjoyed James Franco? I think he's. 
I, I enjoyed his presence in movies. I mean, you could like James Franco as an actor. I think if you liked him as a person, that might be, be concerning. You know, but no, I'm yeah. saying that he doesn't seem to be a great person. But at the same time, I'm saying uh, that I still like. It's James almost Franco like uh, I think Gary Oldman's got concerning aspects of his personal life as well, right? Uh, probably not to James Franco levels, but but maybe a little bit. Yeah, it's a couple of people. I like Army Hammer. Is he concerning? Army Hammer's definitely got. Yeah, I enjoy definitely. I enjoy Army Hammer performances. Hey, it's okay, you know. I mean, there are examples you can name. <laughs> Army Hammer is the extreme of. I can't think of an Army Hammer. Well, I think I think but I think Kevin Spacey is probably the ultimate. Kevin Spacey, of, that's a good you one. Know, yeah, you know, he's still a great actor horrible human being obviously you know uh so so you know if you could compartmentalize those two things and that's all well and good you know what i mean some people won't be able to and that's that's fine too um but but no, yeah i mean james franco yeah. i think to me i think he just has a fairly limited range like i think he's hilarious in a pineapple express sure. um or disaster artist and at the same time he's like actually really really fantastic in 127 hours you know oh yeah what a movie and, that was that's a I danny boyle this, movie isn't it it is, yes. I just think this is probably a little too far of a stretch for him of Dr. James Franco, you know, <laughs> s- s- chem- chemist smart enough to come up with a drug that can almost cure Alzheimer's, but, you know, then just dooms the planet, you know, to, to become the planet of the apes. It's, it's a little far He's far-fetched. just stupid enough. Yeah, I guess maybe that's what it is. It does lend a little credence. It's like he's, he's not smart enough to really fully pull it off. Um, he's just got a little dumbness that holds him back, you know, and, and that that dumbness is enough to doom the entire and human and and, and, race, and you know, right? and and I guess in some ways it's just like, yeah. And then he goes home and tests it on his dad, and it's like, yeah, maybe that is a Dr. James Franco sort of move to make. You know, <laughs> you need someone that 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 is that is clearly not doesn't have the most like you know, I guess. Who was the uh, the doctor? I feel like the doctor should have been the guy from Last of or not Last of Us, but the. I feel like Doctor Steve Jacobs could have been, mm, okay, the guy from could have been uh, American <laughs> Fiction. Oh, think, Jeffrey Wright. I think Jeffrey Wright would have nailed that role a lot better. But yeah, I guess Jeffrey Wright would have been a little bit different too, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. But every 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 time I saw that doctor, that guy come in there, what are you doing? Blah blah. blah. I always pictured American Fiction guy going in there and doing it. I think he was. I, I like I like that guy. Not Jeffrey Wright. Um, the other guy. Another guy from that. The brother. The brother from American Fiction. Sterling K. Brown? Yes. That's oh, exactly yeah, yeah. who I'm thinking of. Yeah. He, he could have been the fucking CEO doctor asshole guy for sure. And he's, he's definitely got that mode like of, of his like where he can just like switch into just being a fucking dick. Yeah. He like. could have been a dick. The ins- this entire movie would have been great. Yeah. Just, just the, the entire performance is one note dick. But <laughs> it's OK because he gets dropped out in the helicopter at the end. And so who would you like, have Yay. cast as James Franco? Uh, well, interestingly enough, uh, Tobey Maguire was originally in talks to to star. It's a full Spider-Man um, fucking thing is what it yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. They're like, uh, is there anyone else in Spider-Man that we can get? James Franco. William okay. Defoe. Okay. That can work. William Defoe could have worked. A little old, plays a little older. You'd probably have to change Frida Pinto to be uh, someone a little <laughs> older, been, hopefully a little bit more age appropriate. Could have been the dad. Could have been the dad. That's true. Could have that. That would. I guess that would have made sense. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think Tobey Maguire to me actually reads. Holy as, shit! If you had William Defoe be the dad and James Franco be, the <laughs> <laughs> that would have been fun. <laughs> just just a full on Spider Man thing. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I think Toby kind of to me fits the bill a little bit more of someone who I can buy as an actual smart enough scientist to develop something that is very like it's like knocking on the door of being revolutionary. It's not quite right. It's not hundred percent there. Obviously, it's got some unintended side effects, but I can see Toby <laughs> like pulling that off a little humans. bit more <laughs> unintended side effects. You know, it's 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 not important. Um, you know, we just gotta. You know, if we're ready for human trials, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think Toby would have been a little bit better, but I didn't mind James Franco in this, but I think something that is nice and I think I might be pretty, pretty, pretty much good on rise is that because of the structure of this trilogy, you get to see different humans in each movie. And I think that really, really works well is my, is my honest yeah. opinion of it. So I'm happy to have Dr. James Franco in one movie, even if he's not my preferred person who would have played that role, because when you get to the next one, you get a little bit of a different flavor to it, you know, which is nice. So anyway, uh, I, I said, I think that's, that's my, 
think that's my piece on Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Do you have anything else you want to add? No, that's it. Uh, groundbreaking movie when it came out, for sure. Definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah. And and again, holds up to this day, you know, 13 years on or almost. You can certainly whatever. see the CG. Like. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it doesn't a, hold. It doesn't look bad either. I mean, there's moments it doesn't where look it's bad. Body. Just like, some of the uh, motion the bits dragons. Look, look a little wonky. Doesn't look bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, yeah. You can you can. But you can you see the you can see a difference between oh you totally know, you know uh, six years pass and and the technology really that's right it, it 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 evolves with the times which is good you want it to so but but uh but yeah no I mean and, and it's well done and you can really see and it's true of all of them again say this about any three these any of these three movies the performances come through the, the you know even with the most you know limited version of this technology of this mocap you know performance capture technology. You still see Andy Serkis through all the CGI. What an like, actor! See it dude. in the eyes. What you an see actor! It, you see it in, in, the, in the expressions. Like he, it, it, he shines through the fact that you know it, it, that it's obviously he's not literally buried in makeup and everything. He's buried in visual effects, I guess technically. But you still you can still pick out the fact that oh yeah, that's that's fucking Andy Serkis. That you know Caesar is Andy Serkis. So um, very well done, very well done. So uh, okay, now that's actually all I have on that. So we can move on to the second of these three movies in this trilogy, if you're ready. Uh, yeah. Second movie. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which was released July 11th of 2014, written by Amanda Silver, Rick Jaffa, and Mark Baumbach, directed by Matt Reeves, um, who we've, we've now seen him do some other stuff sense which has been pretty good but you know back in 2014 maybe he was making bangers too i don't know we'll get into it uh this movie stars andy circus jason clark gary oldman carrie russell toby kevill and cody smith mcphee uh and dawn the fragile peace between caesar's ape community and humans who had survived a deadly pandemic is threatened as mistrust and betrayal threaten to plunge both tribes into a war ah another commentary yeah yeah uh, so, I mean, maybe that's the place to start is, uh, I mean, okay, well, I guess we should start with, did you see this in theaters back in the day? Have you seen this movie before? Uh, yeah, definitely. Okay. I think so. I thought so. Um, but I guess the question for me, and I'm, I'm curious if it's, if this movie, I think plays very differently in a, we have actually lived through a pandemic. Yes. Sort of world that's what I almost then. said. <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, back in back in 2014 when it comes out and the whole start of this movie is, you know, the simian flu pandemic has killed almost everyone. One in 500 people are immune, so they survive. And so the whole fucking world has collapsed into just a complete shit show. Um, you know, it's just kind of at the time it's like, huh, you know, fun, futuristic sci-fi sorts of things or whatever. 28 days know, later kind of deal. 28 days later, you know, uh, 12 monkeys, whatever, that sort of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, these days, you know, you, you watch it and you're just like, oh man, it's a little too close to home, perhaps. A couple um, years later. I mean, not a couple years. Fucking eerie. I mean, what? Uh, 14? Six, half, you know, half a decade or so, but not, in the scheme of things, not a long time. Not a know, long time. Not a long like, time. There's a, you know, there's a obviously pandemic. Obviously, we did not. We did not have the simian flu, uh, and, and the mortality rate obviously was was much better with COVID than it was with the simian flu. That's right. Uh, and we don't have but uber smart. As apes, the apes but, were blamed for the fucking thing, uh, well, you fucking Chinese people, you sons of a that's bitches, true. right? You, you know, dirty sons of a bitches, thing. you spread this it's, fucking it's, it's, thing. It's, you know, it, it it's kind of on the money with just like the types of reactions, in the same way that like you know when we did our COVID special, we talked about contagion. It was very much contemplating, like, you know, and you had you had the people who were shilling, you know, fake drugs, fake miracle cures, and it's just like nothing is. There is no original thought in this world. Just everything is just, you know, people can just predict and you know why? humanity's response because to it. It's happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's happened. And it will happen. It'll time, happen time again. again. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's and it's uh, it's it's um. I don't know. It's almost prophetic, you know, like totally. It, yeah. Like it's happened throughout history all the way back. You can go all the way back and the reactions of people and the reactions of the plagues and things that we endure and the whole nine yards, everything. It always, it's always the same. It's, uh, and you don't need to be like, you know, like I'm not properly educated in history. I mean, I'm, 
high school <laughs> educated in history. Um, sure. Wikipedia you, educated. Well, yeah, yeah. You don't have to. You don't have to scratch too deep of a scab to to like find this well of knowledge that these things have happened before in history and the reactions to these things is always the same. It's, uh, Mm -hmm, you know, I don't know. I think it's incredibly interesting. Um, it's incredibly interesting that, uh, you know, I mean, this is obviously fiction, uh, but like, you know, we talk about it time in time out, you know, we talk about it in formal means of education. We talk about it in our media and we still can't, react to it properly we still can't dodge the you know the the effective ways to counter this stuff you know like we haven't figured that out yet Mm -hmm. uh maybe maybe next time it happens maybe we can (sighs) react to it effectively you know to say you know uh but if history how long has it been if it's if it's still in our lifetime then maybe but you know, maybe not at the same if, time. I don't if, really yeah, don't exactly. Know. How long? How it's many a, times to do, about, I think, do really, these but... kind of events have to happen before we react yeah. in a way that's effective? You know. Um, anyways, uh, clearly the people in this work of fiction do not react effectively because, like, sure. humankind is fucking decimated, and everybody yeah. blames the apes, even though, well, James Franco made this shit. It's really Dr. James Franco's fault, if we think about it, at the right. end of the day. You know, I mean, I guess, you know, he, you know, Caesar did. Caesar did propagate it a bit, you know. He he uh, he wasn't just an isolated incident. He was very much trying to... Uh, spread you know, knowledge. Prometheus. Spread the knowledge, spread yeah. the intelligence, and... and, and, and but, the, you know, but... But once things kind of resolve, once they do have the escape in that first one, like as we kind of see, like leave me alone. He, he just kind of, yeah, just, he just, right. they just, they all just kind of fuck off into the into the woods and and are content to just do their thing and have their own little world that's just this very very small section of the world. And I and I you know absolutely think if it wasn't for the fact of humanity dealing with the fact that oh shit you know we're we're all dying rapidly and we have to figure out how to keep society or civilization afloat that if, if, if they were, if humans were unaffected by the simian flu, they'd go into that, those fucking, they burn those woods out. You know what I mean? They'd fucking drop a bomb and call Absolutely. like, no, these, yeah, these, these kill things the cannot be apes. allowed to live. They are an affront to humanity. They are a threat. We are going to kill them. And, and obviously we sort of see that with war a little bit too, but I have no doubt in my mind that were it not for, the simian flu, you know, affecting humans in the way that in the, in the way that it did in this, in this, this movie, that this story wouldn't this 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 group of apes led by Caesar wouldn't be be allowed to exist, which is a again just kind of a commentary on the fact that it's like yeah humans kind of suck sometimes, don't they? Uh, not great. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, but it doesn't happen that way. Simian flu does does knock a lot of people off and 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 leave society and into these little pockets here. Obviously, we focused on a group of survivors near San Francisco, oh. uh, who obviously are stones throw from. From where where Caesar and company are, and living. you've been in San Fran, yeah, you've driven I in have. San Fran. Uh, I, I were you able to identify landmarks in this movie? Uh, I can't say that I that I know. I mean, I mean, Golden I identified Gate. the Golden Gate Bridge right. and and the and, and the last one. I guess did you did you, this one did too, you identify but, the Pier Tower? Um, I had a uh, cheeseburger right underneath that goddamn tower, and that was cool. you know I, I didn't when I watched it this time. I I have to, I have to confess I didn't clock it, although. Interestingly enough, uh, the first time I saw this movie, I had not been to San Francisco because it would have been it would have been later that year that I that I would have stepped foot in San Fran for the first time. But upon rewatch, I didn't I can't say that I specifically picked anything out other than general obvious ones that you might be able to pick out having not been there. I picked out a couple of things. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Nice. That's pretty neat. Well, what would you think about Dawn of the Planet of the Apes? Uh, uh, on, I thought on, Dawn on this of the Planet of the Apes was an interesting commentary. Uh, once again, so now we've gone from a commentary of like that internal battle as you as you grow up to now now you're 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 seen as a leader of Caesar's a leader of these group of people, right? Or these sure. group of apes, right? Might as well be people. Um, these group of individuals, that's what I'll say. Um and there's there's the 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 want and the there's the want to you know 
naturally these people these people are reacting negatively to you and you know there's an instinct to want to lash out and the primal instinct especially of one coba you know sure fuck sure. Em. fuck them you know yeah these people are bad and 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 and, and this and that and they've abused me right and yeah, literally and, literally my entire life up until right. caesar rescuing us and, and giving us salvation was being mercilessly tortured and experimented upon. That's right. You know? So yeah. like his resentment is very understandable and, and rational. Full of hate, you know? Yeah. And and, and um, mistrust and, and, and again, like why Caesar clearly has this element of trust with humans. Again, this is sort of what we alluded to is he was raised by a good man, spent time mostly around good humans. He he saw a flavor of bad human when he got to the, you know, when he was locked up in San Fran. That's right. And that's obviously what led him down this path. But they're all not bad. But it's nothing like Koba. You know, he clearly recognizes there are, you know, the, the, some people are good and some people are bad. And, and, and maybe things can work. Maybe things can work. Whereas Koba is very much just human, human, humans are bad. Human bad, kill. Kill human. You know, like that's, the, that's kind Even of the, the, the logic there. Even at the expense of ape. Yeah. Kill yeah, I mean, ape. To kill human. Right. You if know? you get rid of all the humans, you'll lose some apes in the process, but you'll have some apes left over and maybe things will be okay then. That's right. You know, then, you, then, then your problems are solved. Every ape, ape live happily ever after. I guess maybe that's that's the, that's the Koba thinking. You know, and I don't even know if Koba has a happily ever after. I feel like people that are like this have no happily ever after. Yeah, they don't think that far maybe. No, they don't. They, they think it's bad, just, bad, 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 bad. They're just, you know... Kill full, and and then whatever of hate. happens happens. Full of yeah. hate, um, you know, and it can't be satiated. I think that's the word. You know, uh -huh. they're insatiable, yeah. uh, and 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 Koba is insatiable. Right. And I guess that's probably true. Koba eradicates. He completes his genocide of humans, and it's just ape society. Now there's probably some apes that are going to piss him off, so uh, he's probably going to kill them too. So, that's right. They're out of know, line. It's just it's just know? an endless cycle of violence until. He finally gets killed or something That's like that. That's right. So yeah, uh, he's just a hateful person, uh, and I think that uh, I think that you know it's it's interesting too because Caesar's reaction to Koba is sympathetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? I mean he, he he yeah I mean and and I think that even for an audience I mean I think for until Koba really do does give? cross the line. What do you give? What do you give until you react to it? You know? Yeah. How much do you yield to Koba before, okay, Koba, you're, you know, I got to deal with you. You know, right. you're clearly yeah. not understanding. Uh, yeah. Well, and, and, and Caesar yields a whole lot because he believes in, you know, apes together are stronger, whatever he says throughout the movie. Yeah, um, he's got to hold the bundle of sticks together. Apes it's, together, strong. You know, it makes me question whether or not Caesar's is Caesar ignorant to the fact that Cobra is a problem? Is is it Caesar's hubris that he thinks that he that is he does he think that he's above the rest of the apes? You know. Yeah, I mean, I think I think for me, the way I look at it is there's just this, you know, I mean, Caesar almost has to. I mean, and it's true. I think of a lot of the apes is you know as the apes are having this newfound intelligence there's an inherent naivete to, to everything that they almost yeah. do where it's just, you, you want to believe the best in each other, you know, and it's, does he believe it's like, the best like, in the apes because he's above them, you know? Well, I think, I mean, I think, I don't even think for me, I mean, maybe, maybe you could look at it that way, but I think even for me, I don't think Caesar necessarily sees himself above them. I just think Caesar sees ape is ape. You know, why would, you know, it's the same thing. Like we could, we could boil it down to why do people kill each other? And it's like, we're, aren't we all the same? Like, aren't we all humans? Why Why is there such conflict? Why is there such division amongst humanity? And like, obviously, there's a multi-layered answer to that question of why people feel a certain sort of way that they have to kill each other. But how but, long do you perpetuate it? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess just for me, I think there's almost the simplicity of apes sticking together, where it's just like, now that we recognize, you know, like our place in the world and we have that level of sentience that we didn't do before, like... We have to stick together. Like we are a special. Titan Otherwise, group we're the of, same, right? Yeah, and it's just like you know, apes together, strong. Ape, not kill ape. 
Like we got rules. We got rules for a reason. It's not it's not some fucking crazy concept. We're not trying to teach rocket science. Not trying to turn you into Dr. Ames Ape James Franco or anything like that. You know, like it's just it's a pretty simple rule, you know, set of rules to abide by of just, you know, there's no reason to to um to you know, to to rock the boat, I guess, right? You know, I think that's almost the way that Caesar looks at it. And again, I, I think it's from a naive perspective where it's just like I've seen bad humans i recognize that there is this level of you know within within humans i recognize there are people that are going to suck and there are people that are going to be good there's going to be a good dr james franco and there's going to be a draco malfoy you know what i mean yeah so within apes though i don't think he's really seen that to this point he has never really that's identified at the end of the movie right you you know he i mean well he says you are not ape but but at the same time i don't think that's really true either it's just the fact well obviously it's literally not it's the fact that you know, once you have these uh, enough individuals, enough group of people, apes, whatever the case may be, people are going to start, people slash apes, they're going to start thinking differently from you. Not a, It's not a monolith. The, people are going to think differently. They're going to have different ideas about how things should be done, about how, you know, things should be led. And, and, and that inherently is going to create some, some, some form of division, some sort of conflict and I, and I do think that this this movie in general is just kind of really getting into that and fleshing that out. And and the end the end result is Caesar learning a lesson of apes just can't hen- inherently be trusted just because they're apes. You have to you have to treat them the same way you treat the humans. Cautious, you know, making sure that people or apes that you can trust are the ones who you can find actually trustworthy. And it's a it's a lesson that obviously pops back up even in war. But I think he's a little bit more hardened at least by these experiences in dawn where you know this this dream of having a peaceful ape society obviously doesn't work and not only that even this dream of having a peaceful coexistence with humans which feels like there's moments in this movie where it can work you know the problem is you got bad apples you know what i mean you got a coba you've got carver who's a fucking dickhead on the human side who's just trying to shoot apes and you know, brings a gun when he's not supposed to, you know, it's just inevitably someone fucks it up just inevitably. And, and that's always the kind of thing that you have to look out for. And obviously it's true in our world, but it's very much true in here where it's just, you know, it's on full display. It's a full, it's a perfect commentary of, of how, I don't know, distrust is sown within. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Society. Yeah, exactly. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's the perils of, you know, being able to think freely and, and, and have just different beliefs and thoughts and experiences that, that, that make you who you are that, and, you know, maybe you can simplify it as some people are going to suck and some people are going to suck less, you know, and some yeah, people might even totally. not suck or whatever. And, and, and inherently that's just going to create problems. And, and, and now you have, not only do you have that, but you have apes who have that subdivision and you have humans who have that subdivision and they have this kind of equal level of thought and intelligence between them. Yeah. But you have different levels of power, you know, like the humans have the guns, they have this whole armory, right? They've got, you know, access to this sort of artillery and weaponry that the apes don't. Um, Apes have physical prowess. Apes have the physical strength and the prowess and, 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 you know, in the way that they are literally stronger, but they have, the way that they can move, the way that they can climb and stuff like that, the humans are not incapable of. So they have these kind of, you have these groups that in and of themselves clearly have issues within their groups. And then you have these two groups, even with their, you know, intermingling conflicts within, they come against each other too. So, and then it's just kind of chaos at that point, right? Because yeah. it's just, it's just more, a more time bomb of, you, need more of, you know, this just conflict because, because humans are fucking on edge because these group of people threatened. Are, right. are, are threatened. They're literally going to die if they can't get this power restored to the dam because they're going to lose all their electricity and, and have basically, you know, they're going to go back to the fucking Stone Ages, you know, in terms of how they're going to have to live their lives. And that necessarily puts the apes on guard because the apes just want to keep to themselves. They're content to do what they want, but the humans aren't okay with that. So it's either going to be full on conflict or it's going to be working together. And it's... but But... <sighs> But working together is easier said than done. And that's kind of what this movie shows is, you know, it's a nice thought, but it doesn't work. At the end of the day, it just doesn't work. Yeah. It could. uh, It can. It It can. It It just takes a degree of trust. It just, 
for, and, for whatever when, you know when, reason when, you know everyone's just they don't in such wanna... a bad bad enough way that that yeah. that that it, that it can't really work it's not going to last it's, it's a, sad it's, it's sad to watch because both parties both parties desperately need each other you know totally uh, yeah. and we, I mean, we I see that that's... on both sides of the the narrative but yeah. we uh, you know and we just watch them like spiral just because an individual or whatever you know it just it it creates conflict uh, yeah I, I mean i think that's what's really interesting is this i mean in, in the same way that rise obviously had had good james franco and bad brian cox and and, and draco yeah. malfoy and stuff you know you see both sides of humanity here you do too but you also see like both of these groups just internally you use i mean the humans are not bad and this inherently bad this group of humans are just trying to survive. This group of apes are just trying to survive. And they both are, are sympathetic groups of individuals that you can get behind and understand kind of where they're coming from. And yeah, it really is just kind of just 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 two assholes at the end of the day. Two little shits, you know, just kind of kind of undoes it. I think maybe there's a few more shits on the human side. Because I feel like Gary Oldman's a little bit of a shit towards the end, um, <laughs> you know. And it's really just Jason Clark and his family that are kind of like, you know, maybe we can make this work. But, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think it's just. But to Jason me, Clark's that, wife is also like CDC and shit, or maybe he's not as. I don't know if they're married or not, but. Uh yeah, I'm not sure, but not not originally. I think it seems like he had a family and then has now had a kind of new family yeah. sort of thing. Is is what I recall, but um. Yeah, I think interesting that, I think commentary, that the, right? It is really interesting, and I I think that's what makes the this movie. Were, I, I I think this is a fantastic movie. I just just saying that up, you know. Yeah, totally. I also like I the think like that, the primal war makeup on the apes looks incredibly yeah, intimidating. Pretty cool. Uh, the yeah. evolution in the CG, uh, the definitely looks, noticeable. Yeah. Well, I think the, the 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 confidence that it shows with beginning and ending the movie with these full facial close ups, I think just just goes to show that they're like. Yeah, we're 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 getting, we're getting there, better, you know. Yeah, like, right? It's not perfect always. There's definitely moments where it doesn't look as great as other moments, um, but they definitely got the beginning and ending shots down to a T. Um, those those are very. Koba well looks like a fucking monster. Like just, Koba is fucking terror 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 terrorizing. I don't know. I don't know what word I'm looking for. Um, horrifying. Just just yeah. Uh, yeah he's His he's blind monstrous. eye and man. Yeah. All fucked up looking. Um, But I think for me, I think just the things that we've been talking about, those are the things that make this movie work so well for me is I'm not rooting against the humans. I'm not rooting against the apes. There are no, you know, there are, it's not like it, like one army versus another army. It's not apes good, humans bad. Because even almost by the end of, by, by, I mean, by the end of Rise, you're, you're on team apes. Absolutely. You know what I mean? They've been mistreated. All they want to do is just, not be mistreated and, and survive. Right. This makes and it more here, nuanced, right? There's more nuance to it where the humans want to survive, the apes want to survive. And what's really, really sad is the fact that, well, they totally could. They totally should. They, you know, they, they, they can. There's, there's moments in this movie where they have, they have this kind of peaceful coexistence and, and, and almost this level of trust with each other. And it always just gets betrayed because again, one or two people or apes keep fucking up and, and it just leads to horrible conflict and unnecessary violence and death and brutality. And it's real. You know what I mean? Like, I think, I think it works because it feels like, yep. Yep. It does seem like how this, this was probably play. Here out. we are, you know, a decade later, uh, and there's countless conflicts across the globe. Totally. It's, for it's the same. It's, yeah. For I mean, the same reason. It's the same kinds of shit that we do see in real life, just just kind of you know, told in a fictional way, so it's not quite as depressing, I guess. Obviously, when you're you know talking about fictional like you know smart apes versus fictional humans, as you are when you're talking about very real humans and very real humans killing each other, um, but it hits for those reasons because it it does feel very authentic and I guess earnest in the way that that it tells these stories, and I think that the characters within those stories, you know, as we are looking at this as a fictional movie are very, very compelling, right? Because the humans, I think, are interesting. You know, this is like a classic problem, I feel like, of the recent Godzilla movies. It's just like, I don't fucking care about any of these idiots. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I, And I think this one, you know, I, like I cared about, for the most part, Dr. James Franco. Like, I felt like he was compelling. I was like sure, hoping care that about he would be able dad. to care his dad. You know what I mean? Um, and here's the same way. It's just like, these people are just trying to survive. And 
and even Gary Oldman, who was a little bit of a shit. And I in can understand. Like, I can identify. You he's know? a leader in a tough situation who's trying to do the best to, to keep people calm and not panic. The one you don't about, identify with, though, is the fucking skinhead dude. Yeah. Right. There are like and, and like, again, there's 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 the Akobo equivalent where it's just like, come on, dude. You know what I mean? And like, and the only reason they even bring him in there is like, well, he's the only one that kind of knows how this shit sort of works. So I guess right. we have to bring him, even though he's a fuckhead. Like, fuck, I don't want to bring he's that a guy. It's a problem. But like at the same time, like even the humans distrust him, but they're not going to just go off and fucking kill him and be like, yeah, we're better off without him. Like, you know, humans recognize again, I don't have to like you. I don't have to agree with everything that you do and say, but like at the end of the day, we're humans trying to stick together and survive. Like we have to right. work together despite our differences. Whereas the apes are kind of in the end, not necessarily inverse, but this other scenario where they're like, yeah, like we're all apes. We're together because we're apes it doesn't really matter that we think too differently. Like it's just good enough that we're together. You know what I mean? Until that's clearly not good enough for a Koba. So, um, yeah, I just think, I think that both are really well done and Caesar obviously here, you know, talking about furthering his arc. He's now got children. Do you think he's he's now a Caesar? Do you think he's Caesar? Now that I've like drawn the Greek comparisons, do you think he's Caesar because like, Hey, it's like a, like a, like a, like a Roman Greek kind of thing. Uh, I mean, yeah, I think there's definitely okay. some elements to that in terms of, cool. of the naming and stuff. I, I Again, I don't know enough about that sort of pocket of history and mythology and stuff to, to, to talk about, like, what exactly the intent is behind, like, we're naming him Caesar because X, Y, Z. I mean, I think we see, like, a Julius Caesar book, I think, on... Like the like like because Will's dad, I think, names him in, in Rise, but but I imagine there's there's a deeper meaning to to kind of how they all how how that all is crafted in the first place. You know, when they were making the movies, I have to guess anyway. So yeah, but yeah, Caesar, man. I mean, he's he's got a couple babies. Well, he's got he's got one. He's got he's got an older son. And he's got a little baby son. Um, he's got a wife, and I think that something else that I think this 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 movie does that's really quite topical. Speaking of kid is the radicalization of you know youth right oh you know, like yeah it's his son blue there. eyes the blue eyes is like you know it kind of feels like you know it's sort of rebellious teenager maybe sort of attitude but it kind of just feels like he doesn't really see eye to eye with caesar on everything you know and, and he doesn't really understand why caesar does things and you know his friend ash gets shot by a human and caesar's like you're just gonna you know he just lets it go and he's like you're just gonna let it go like what the fuck that goes against everything we know and 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 the fact that koba takes advantage of that and kind of twists blue eyes into working for him and then you know kind of leading to this moment where fucking koba who's an insane asshole takes ash and just fucking throws him down the stairwell like it was just this awful awful moment like horrifying moment of just like how fucked up things have gotten. Yeah, we know and, what you are. And that's are kind now. of the moment where, like where Blue Eyes kind of snaps out of it a little bit. Right. Yeah. Like, no, you're just a, you're just you're just insane. You're just unhinged. You know, you you yeah. you just you just want to inflict violence. You just want to hurt people. You want to hurt people. You want to hurt apes. You don't care who you're hurting. You just want to hurt. Yeah. You know. Um. And 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 so seeing the arc of Blue Eyes kind of getting kind of you know going through this you know in a way that you know influenceable youths we'll see a thing on the internet and start buying into it and buying into it. Oh, buying it's into all it. And, too, and, you know, and hopefully there's a moment in the reality that they experience when, when they fucking snap them out, out of it. It wasn't clear, but now, no, but, but now it feels even more so like on point where it's yeah. just like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, you know, it's, it's, it's the same sort of idea and it's just, it's, it's, it's gut wrenching to watch, you know, to see in the moment and leading to this, you know, horrible moment again, where, where his friend is just killed in front of him mercilessly, you know, and just, inhumanely um but then you know to see blue eyes i think kind of snap out of it is, is obviously kind of it's good you know you like to see the res the, the resolution of that is oh he recognizes that koba is insane he recognizes that this isn't the way he recognizes that maybe there are some humans that you can put your faith into and and, and believe in and trust and that's okay it doesn't mean you have to trust all of them but there are some that you can there's get nuance with, you there's know, nuance working together in the with. world right right it's Ever, gray you know, and so the world is yeah. gray it's not black and white it's gray exactly yeah so anyway um been rambling a bit i guess but uh no, i don't okay. know i think it's a great yeah. movie what do you what do you have to say on this i'm going to give you i'm going to give you the the floor if you've got some some thoughts on dawn that you'd like to share i think that like i said i think the 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 discussion in this movie is 
held within the nuance because it's 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 you know um caesar's gone from this role of 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 infant you know whatever ignorant of everything uh, he's given knowledge he spreads that knowledge now he feels responsible to protect the 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 all of the apes that have escaped right and he uh he's got to grapple with the fact that you know <sighs> He's got to grapple with the fact that not everybody agrees with him. Right. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's gone from, you know, revolutionary to leader, you know. And, and that's, and and that's the thing, right? Like and, and those aren't the same things, necessarily. No. Uh, and and that's, a, that's an age-old tell, too. You know, I feel like these movies are, are... Maybe they're successful in their storytelling because they're classic tales. Yeah, I mean, it's it's drawing on very human things and presenting it through the lens of non-humans, you know? And, yeah. And, and, and do, do great soldiers make great kings, you know? Or, sure, yeah, right. Um, yeah. There's, there's, there's uh, I don't know, there's a lot of nuance in the storytelling, I think, and I think that's what makes yeah, all but three it, I mean, movies. It, and, and I think it is wearing its influences on its sleeve in the sense that it's not pretending to be some hugely original, you know, oh. thing, but it, but it is taking very, very relatable and understandable themes and, and commonplace yeah. ideas that we've seen in humanity. And, and again, bringing it through this lens of, you know, meaning, you know, characters who, who mean a lot to us through obviously fantastic technology and, and, you know, again, but, but at the same time, like there's also something about seeing it through, apes very specifically that i think that it wouldn't work as well if it was lizard people or something like that you know what i no, mean it's because it apes just, are it was, i mean because they're, they are sort of almost they, they have these human-like qualities you know they're just they're just right. you know a, a distant ancestor or, and you know, i mean it's whatever, it's so. the same thing like you can you can you can put this you can put this entire story on like ai or robotics or whatever you know yeah yeah sure right yeah totally and it would totally be the same thing uh, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and it doesn't make it unoriginal, you know, it adds different spice or flair, you know, it, it, I don't know, you can, you can change the storytelling a little bit here and there, but I mean, ultimately it's an almost human thing that, that is brought more like you take an ape and, and you inject medication or whatever and it elevates it to almost like i mean it's it's it brings it humanity and mm -hmm. and now that's its own thing uh if it can if it can replicate itself and everything else now you're talking about an ai thing that can replicate itself and it, it has self-awareness and then it it begs the question of what it is to be human what it is to be human and i think that's uh you know i don't think it's a completely of course it's not a completely original idea uh but it's a very human idea right like what mm -hmm. it, because answering the question of what makes them the apes them almost answers the question of what makes us us right you yeah. know what i mean uh so yeah. you know exploring that i like the identity of what separates the apes from the humans in this movie, you know, is the same idea of what, what separates the AI or the robots and, and, you know, deus machina or whatever, you know, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's all the same story. Uh, and the story is what makes us, us and what, mm -hmm. and, and, and not, it, it doesn't even matter what makes them, them. But in exploring what makes them them, we find out what makes us us. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. So, yeah. So, anyways, uh, you know, they they tell the story of these apes and these conflicts and everything else, and all it is is a reflection of humanity. Um, and it's right. uh, whether it's literally through humanity as depicted in this, or it's through the non-humanity sides of this. Like, you, at the end of the day, it all kind of funnels back into what are we taking away from it in terms of what it says about yeah and maybe what that's what makes human. these stories so good uh i think yeah. uh, i think the 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 twilight the twilight zone guy made the original uh twilight twilight zone guy made the original planet of the apes i think i'm pretty sure anyways 
Um, and it's possible. I think the uh, I think this this really it really explores the trepidation between the two the two different races of of like cognizant beings, right? Like, I mean, mm-hmm. one side gives a little bit because you know, hey, we should give a little bit. And then you have the uh, the orangutan. What's his name? Maurice. Maurice. You got Maurice. Like Maurice clearly knows. You know he he's right up there with Caesar. Uh, mm. I find it interesting that he can't communicate not, communicate like Caesar. Yeah. Well, it seems like most of them are not nearly as vocal as Caesar is. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know if it's. And it's something Anna and I talked about, like as we were watching this, and it's like I think to some extent the way I kind of interpreted it is that it's a reflection of kind of how they were raised, I guess. You know, where Maybe, yeah. the level of human interaction that they had, perhaps. Um, I'm not really sure. Yeah, but it is kind of interesting. And obviously, on on the other hand, it also just elevates Caesar in that sort of way, where it makes him feel like he's the leader. He's the one that speaks as much as he does. Yeah, he can speak you know, on behalf of the and, other and apes. You know, it's but, still kind of stunted speech, but but you know. It's the others are even more stunted, I guess, too. So, yeah. Uh, but Maurice is like, um, I feel like he's almost, I don't know. Maurice feels different because he identifies with humans. Like, he can. Uh, Maurice just feels like the most, like, level headed and, like, yeah. rational, I guess. Right. Of, of, well, he of, doesn't, of all, he doesn't have he the can... struggle of trying to, like, he, he doesn't walk the path of the leader, right? He walks the right. path of the advisor. He's the advisor. Right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh so he, you know, it 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 allows him to to have a kind of like laid back I don't know. Laid yeah, back. He can look, way he can look at it a little bit more objectively exactly. than, than someone like Caesar who has a dog in the fight or whatever, you know, or or a human that has a dog in the fight. Right. Not a literal dog, I guess, but you know. Yeah, it's almost like uh, it's almost a parallel between the the the, the character that, uh, um, not Woody Harrel. No, I'm on the wrong fucking movie because it's the only one up. <laughs> uh, not um, Wyatt. What's his name? Is it Wyatt? <laughs> no. Uh, gotta What's feed the me guy's phone, name? I'll, I'll, the the main character, not not Gary Oldman, but the other guy. Oh, Jason Clark. His, uh, the character's name, the Jason Clark, Malcolm is the character's Malcolm. name. Let me, let me just, yes, let Malcolm. Let me just feed you all that info. Uh, okay. It's almost right, like great. Malcolm's character, right? Like right. Yeah, yeah. Caesar is Gary Oldman's character, where, right. where right. Maurice is... These are the is... equivalents within these groups, is is the Malcolm. Totally. Exactly. Totally. Um, and, yeah. yeah. And, and Malcolm is like, I'm here to serve humanity, and obviously I want to do everything, but like... We also don't need to kill all the apes. We also don't need to like shoot them every time we see He's them. He's more like, nuanced, we can just, right? We can exactly. just let them fucking do their own thing, and or maybe like obviously we have a goal that we necessarily have to go through ape territory to accomplish to save ourselves and get the power going, you know, from this dam. But like, but we can. You know, co-exist. There's a way to do it that's without just brute force, you know. And we don't. We, there's no. There's no reason whatsoever to go through and just. You know, try to annihilate all these things living in the woods, right? There's because no in the it. same way that like, like Koba doesn't care about apes getting killed, and like obviously they do. Like his his whole conquest of of the humans is leads to tons of apes getting killed left and right. It would be the same thing for the humans to try it. It's like you know, humans might win; they might have the py- the firepower to do it. They're all they're going to get fucked up even more than they already been fucked up in the process. And, and like, is that worth to, it? It leads to the imprisonment of the apes. Yeah. Because Koba is ultimately not out for the apes. He's out for himself. And it's like, right. uh, it's yep. a character he just, piece. He just wants his uh, vengeance. Yeah, exactly. It makes a, it makes a, I don't know, it makes a very interesting character study. It makes a, uh, you know, I think yeah. it's a very nuanced story, just like, um, no, just like the first movie. I think it's, it's very, it's very well told. And, and I think like the first movie, it's, it's a very good story, but it's very unlike the first movie in many, many ways. And I think that that is, that is a good thing. Again, it's an evolution okay. of the characters, right? Like the, it's an evolution the of the characters. It's, it's an evolution of the world. You know, the That's rise right. is very much just kind of our Earth, right? It's 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 pretty straight up the Earth. This is fucking post apocalyptic type shit. You know what I mean? Already, ten years have passed, and the world has crumbled. 
And, and it's interesting to see how much of how much of it is the same, despite how much of it has changed. You right. Know? Well, yeah. I mean, the, the the literal setting of it, you know, like San Francisco, obviously, is is looks like shit now. Yeah. But not. But at the end of the day, humans still behave the same way that humans have always behaved. These apes, you know, I guess, obviously, are behaving differently than they ever did because <laughs> right. cause things are different. But they're behaving in the same ways that you would expect humans to behave, and it's showing off those similarities of yeah. things aren't so simple as apes are good because they're apes. Humans aren't bad because they're humans. There's there's this new there's this level of nuance to it's it all. Gray. You know, that gets hey. explored. Uh shades of gray for sure. Um but I really like that this movie I think it not only serves as a really nice middle chapter, it stands on its own completely, you know, mm-hmm. by telling this kind of complete story within and it. Like obviously the the the, the characterization. Totally. Of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean it, in such a big way where 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 Caesar is not just born and and becomes a revolutionary by the end but caesar is leader at the beginning he's a leader at the end but he's a changed leader he's someone who's gone through um you know he's he's learned a hard lesson i guess you know yeah. through through Koba's right. betrayal um and and he feels tortured by that you know he he has to break his own rule you know he does bat, bat, batman doesn't kill ape not kill ape but but he does kill Koba at the end of the day and he has to deal with what is what does that mean you know, what does it mean that I am an ape and then I have killed an ape, you know? So uh, it's just it's just really interesting. Um, and I think that as that middle chapter works, as its own story, it really, really works. Um, so, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. That's, I think, I think that's what I have on it. Uh, I'll, I'll give and you. And fuck Koba. What do you think? Any, <laughs> yeah. Is that the last note that we want to leave yeah, for Dawn? Co- do you have anything else Koba. you want to add? Fuck Koba. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that. Hot take. Cold take, probably. Um, all right, are we ready to move on to the finale of this trilogy? Yeah. War for the Planet of the Apes, which was released July 14th, 2017, like I said, just before just before we started this, this little podcast here. Um, probably around the time that we were tinkering with things, bruising reviews and all that stuff, working time. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, movie was written by Mark Bomback and Matt Reeves, directed by Matt Reeves, stars Andy Serkis, Woody Harrelson, and Steve Zahn, and, and, and others, obviously. Um, as the conflict between apes and humans has escalated into full war, Caesar sets out to avenge those he has lost. So, uh, I think, so, obviously, as you kind of established, um, you know, with, with my fun fact is I saw this in theaters and, and you didn't, you didn't see it in theaters. So did, did you end up this watching this movie? No, no, it was, it was a thing that you hadn't, you didn't see it in theaters. I, and I think that even when we were doing our year in review, I don't think you had seen it at that point either. So it didn't really quite enter oh, the conversation God. for you. What's wrong with me? So did you like, w- did you watch this movie at some point before now? Or is, yes, think I this had the seen first this movie seen before. It? I don't had, remember okay. not, not seeing it in theaters. Okay. Yeah, no, you did. Uh, but I had I, definitely I, yeah. seen this movie. Okay, all right. I I just I didn't know. I think probably maybe I influenced you into like making sure that like hey you should you should not skip maybe. this one. It's it's pretty good too. Um, but yeah, uh, War for the Planet of the Apes. All right, so you've seen it. I don't think I've seen it since theaters. To be fair, to be to like to be honest, I think I saw it one time in theaters, and I think I saw it again just a few days ago before recording this. I think I've only seen it just the two times. Um, it's a heavy movie. It's a heavy movie, man. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a sad movie. But uh, but but what do you think about it? Do you think it's a good movie? Do you think it's worthy of the other oh, two? Do you think we've man. established that the first two are certainly good movies? So so yeah. What do you think of War? Uh, War is is, um, man. You know, I think so. The first movie is Caesar's like. You know, teenager. Yeah, exactly. His rise. rise, rise I think Caesar. that. Uh, I think that uh, rise is Caesar's. Like, in order to maintain status quo, like what it is to recognize things and react to things. Uh, and then I think that I think that war is like where do you? Where do you draw the line for yourself? 
with certain things, you know, Mm -hmm. at which point, at which point do you recognize, um, I don't know. At which point do you recognize the, 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 the length at which you're willing to go for certain things before you lose yourself? Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and what those, and what those things mean to you and what they mean to others, you know? Um, I think that, uh, I think that this movie, I think, is the, uh, in, in, which is, a, you know, very different than a lot of trilogies go. I think that, uh, I think that this, I think this IP has stir stepped itself every time. It's getting better with it's each getting better every entry. time, right? Okay. Like, I think, I think the first movie is profound. I think it's different. I think it's interesting. I think it's, uh, an interesting exploration of the the you know the things that it it, it tries yeah. to explore mm-hmm. uh i think that um if you take the characterization of caesar i think that it's further explored in the second movie right uh yeah. with topical subjects you know and then i think that it's it's i think the catalyst is his third movie i think that this movie really really just explodes on the characterization of Caesar. Uh, I mean, I think if, I mean, I feel like the first one is the most blockbustery of them, you know, if that makes sense. It's, 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 it's still sort of a popcorn movie at the end of the day. The second one's a bit of a popcorn movie with some more, um, and I'm substance isn't the right word. Cause I do think there's substance to rise, but it, but it's a little bit more, uh, I guess nuanced to keep using that word, but it's a little bit more depth to it with the characterization, with everything. Well, still a bit of spectacle, and then war is just like kind of just pure depth. Like there's still spectacle to it, but it's not it's not in a popcorn movie sort of way. It is kind of a a, a more full on character piece kind of movie than than any of the other two are uh, in a big big way, and it and it makes again for a very unique feeling film. You know, I feel like going from Rise to Dawn, you have a director change from Rupert Wyatt to Matt Reeves. You think, okay, in a 10-year time jump, it makes sense that it's going to feel tonally and diff- in tonally different, a little bit kind of detached in some ways. But even Dawn did a really good job of connecting things with, you know, they go back to James, Dr. James Franco's house, and it's like a little quiet, like, nostalgic moment seeing the camcorder video. Yeah. And war, it's still Matt Reeves. You think it's in its a two year time jump. You think it's going to feel like more of the same, and, but but it's completely different. It's just completely different, you know. Even from Dawn, and it's like the um, I don't know. There's a duality between Woody Harrelson's character and and and, and Caesar uh, and Caesar, right? Totally. Uh, there's a duality in it, and it's like the degradation of humanity, right? Yeah. Uh and and that's that's what's interesting to explore because I mean you up until this point it's been the the apes have expounded on their humanity, right? They've been become more and more uh more and more human as as the as, as the series has progressed. And then we get to this third film and the most human of them all the most the most empathetic character has now been reduced now to these primal these primal things and he knows it he's able to reflect upon it right he's 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 aware he's self-aware why, why he's starting to see why koba felt the way that he did you know he, exactly. he's exactly starting to feel the same way he's he's had these moments that have affected him so deeply that he doesn't care. Like he recognizes it, but he almost doesn't care. He's, you know, he's, no. he's he doesn't want people to. And the, I guess perhaps the difference, obviously, the big difference between Caesar and Koba, is that Caesar is not trying to embroil everyone in his personal conflict, but at the same time, he knows that he can't separate himself from it. He, it, it's too close to home for him to, to put it to the side. Much in the same know, way as Woody, in the way that he would character. tell people too. Totally, yeah, they yeah, are I mean, kind of. It's, it's a total reflection two sides to the of same each coin. other. Uh, you know, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a really, I don't know. It's a very well done, well done, like, you know, dance of these characters, you know, and how they're explored and how, you know, Woody Harrelson's character is very much the villain of this entire thing. But the entire time, everyone who loves and surrounds 
you know, Caesar is telling him, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing? Yeah. No, I mean, I think it's, it's what I think is interesting is, I mean, there are no good humans in this movie, really, other than Nova, who is basically a mute child who, for all intents and purposes, is barely human. And that's sort of a thing. That's kind of like the staple. That's like the point of the movie. Nova right. is the point of this movie. Right. Right. And then even, you know, and on the flip side, you really don't have bad apes anymore. I mean, you have bad ape, obviously, who, but he's not really bad. He's just, he's just a little kooky, <laughs> you know, he's a little silly, silly little guy. Um, but he's have arguably more human than everybody else in the, in the movie, you yeah. know? Yeah, that's true. Um, your, your bad ape in this movie is Caesar. I mean, at the end of the day, Long, but it's not really, Caesar's either, not bad. Yeah, either live long C- enough C- to... You know, yeah, but he's not really a villain at the same time. Like he's the villain of his own story at this point because he right. just he can't he again he can't let go of that part of him that just wants to kill the colonel because the colonel has has wronged him in this horrible horrible way, you know, by killing his family. Which it's it's fucking understandable why Caesar feels he, the way that he does, why he can't put those feelings to bed, you know, and and why he does kind of push. The, the the you know his his closest around him like he lets them accompany him but but he's not really recruiting people for his quest for his thirst for vengeance he's almost just like i've got nothing else to live for other than making this guy pay for what he did to me much in the same way that the colonel leaves his leap you know right. leads his people to the yeah. same demise you know it's just kill kill the fucking apes you know at this point especially and, and it's really interesting too there's things that I, about this movie that i forgot because it's been almost seven years since I've seen it, you know, between viewings and this element of the movie where like the Colonel isn't too insane, even for the remaining humans, or at least for some other group of humans who are coming to fucking kill him because he's fucking right. batshit and lost his goddamn mind and he's killing humans and, and everything like it's, that's a really interesting nuance too, is like, even he's gone too far, you know, and in the same way, like Caesar's gone too far. All the apes are trying to do yeah. is just survive and get out, get the fuck out of Dodge. So they can stop getting killed by this fucking crazy guy and his, and his goons. But I don't know, man, like that, that, that's something that, that I thought was like a really interesting kind of thing. And, and seeing like, that's almost where some of the spectacle spectacle comes in. It's just big avalanche kind of thing at the end and stuff like that. But it's not, the movie's not, this movie's not really about, the spectacle, you know what I mean? It really no. is just very much a, a, a character exploration. And it's, I think, you know, when I talked about it all the way back on episode one, I think I described it as a, I think maybe a quiet movie. And, you know, it's like two and a half hours. Like it's, it kind of, you know, it, it doesn't really meander along, but I think it's the closest to meandering of any of the three are. Yeah, but I think it true. is really much in service of just the fact that like, this is just kind of, Again, it's not it's not really trying to be that that blockbustery popcorn movie sort of thing. It is really just trying to be like this is a hard time in everyone's lives and and it's about how yeah. they can cope with loss and grief and and battle through that all and and try to find, you know, a reason to live and and, and a reason to go on. And and like it's different it's interesting than both Rise and Dawn, but it's very I, interesting. I think the most interesting thing is is that Caesar found his humanity and the most ape-like character there was who who was Nova. Yeah. You know, uh, he's reminded time and time again through Nova, through her inability to talk and her inability to, you know, emote like everybody else does. He's reminded time and time again why he's there or why he's, you know, why he's doing what he's doing, you know? Uh, and, and uh, and Nova ultimately is his, you know, saving grace. You know, yeah, no, Nova make, saves make Nova's, the, Nova's the most probably the MVP of the movie. character in the entire film. Saves all the apes from from everybody. You know, yeah, and and, and it's through her that ways. yeah, it's through her that you know the 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 general gets degraded down gets, to like right? you know. Um, mute human can't talk Fuck exactly <laughs> you know you she know, liberates we were doing at the beginning of the episode she liberates all the apes you know so the most right. it's like a, it's like a 180 you know uh she's the most ape-like character she's a human uh but she she liberates the, the apes and it's i, I don't she know brings, i think it was i think it was a fascinating Caesar food and water 
Yeah. You know, keeps him alive when he's obviously in the worst shape he's ever been, you know, just tortured within an inch of his life. Yeah, exactly. You know, the, the ape of, of the story was once again, the savior of, of the character, you know, and it's, uh, I don't know. I think it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting reflection on, you know, what it is that makes us us. And, uh, you know, it's a very nuanced story, and I think it's. I think it's. I think all three films are very impactful in in the way they mm-hmm. tell their story. Um, I think there's a lot of there's there are onions for sure. There's a lot of layers. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, I, was, I thought you were gonna say something about someone cutting onions during this movie because I had that same. I did. Experience. I did. I did cut some. Yes, someone was cutting so, onions. Well, I don't know who it was. I'm not. I don't. I'm not going to name names. I don't know who was doing it, but someone was definitely around me and doing it um, yeah, in certain no. moments in this movie. Might have been her. I don't know who it was. Again, I don't, I'm not sure. But this is a this 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 movie is. I think in a weird sort of way, I think it's probably the least rewatchable of these three movies. And I think the reason for that is it's a fucking sad movie. You know, I mean, there, there are like very obviously impactful, powerful moments. Like, like you said, been talking about Nova's impact on this movie and the characters in the movie. But I think about this movie and something that I did forget about was the fact that his fucking wife and son get killed like 20 minutes into the movie, or I don't even know if it's that long into the movie. Yeah. I forgot about that. Might've been in the trailer, you know, for a movie, you know, when, it, when they, when they were putting out the trailers in theaters seven years ago, but I'd forgotten about that. You know, I saw this this fucking albino gorilla. I'm like, oh, that's sick. That's cool. And then he's an asshole. It's a traitor yeah, piece of shit. And I'm like, oh, snowball or whatever the fuck his name is. <laughs> Winter, you son of a bitch. Winter. Um, yeah. Uh, and so I I kind of you know, the one thing that I do remember, which stuck with me, was was Caesar dying. And and obviously that's such such a huge huge thing. And I almost found myself questioning. I was like, did I misremember this movie? Because he makes it pretty far. You know, he gets out of the, the, you know, the fucking military camp by the end. And I'm just like, shit, what did I, did I misremember? And, you know, he just shares that moment with Maurice at the end and Maurice, Maurice finally, you know, talks and stuff. And I don't know, man, just, I think that there's just the moments in this, this, this movie particularly that just feel really hard hitting, you know what I mean? Where it's just, it's just, I mean, I guess it makes sense. It's the finale to the trilogy you know, and, and, and the tone has kind of been kind of building towards this where it's things are getting, you know, more desperate and dire and dark and everything. But like just by the end to see, you know, Caesar obviously has kind of this, this, I guess, somewhat personal victory in the sense that he's able to survive this. He redeems the the red donkey or whatever and, and kind of is able to move on and, and let his, you know, usher his apes into you know, being able to migrate and, and escape, you know, the violence that, 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 that has been perpetrated throughout this war with this fucking crazed, insane colonel. Um, but then, you know, his son, his little son gets to live, but, but Caesar himself has just taken one too many, you know, wounds and, and, and can't quite make That's it That's fucking out. sad, and, dude. You know, and it's just, he's so close, you know, he's accomplished so much. He's done everything. Like he's, he is a legendary figure, well, or at least will become a legendary figure that has made this so much of this possible. Um, but he just, you know, he just, he just doesn't. He's just, he's just lost too much at this point to to keep going, you know. Um, and man, just uh, you even thinking about it now, you know, it just uh, it's a certain just, way, doesn't it, it? It just, it just, it just cuts deep, you know. It just cuts deep. I'll say. Uh, much like someone was cutting those onions, um, it cuts deep, and deep, deep it, onion it's, cuts. It's, uh, but it's only a cut that's deep because you've seen it from birth to life, you know, totally. to birth yeah. to end. Yeah, like, you know, he's a, you root for Caesar. He's a fully you know, you, you, realized you, character in the utmost absolutely. way. Uh, yeah. And I think there's two directors. Uh, I don't know how many different writers there are, but I mean, it just feels there's a full fully realized it's a complete story exactly for exactly Caesar. exactly it's not the end of the story for the planet of the apes which is why we're getting a fourth movie that you know we'll, we'll, we'll be covering shortly but this is caesar's story this is caesar's trilogy this is the trilogy about caesar you know and and, and, and the story why is very he's well clearly realized. yeah yeah i mean it's 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 brilliant i mean 
But, and as you, as you said, you know, how many stories do you see from basically literally birth to death? Like, not many, not many done this well, at least. Let's put it that way. So, um, yeah, I mean, and, and it, Caesar is just, just fully relatable, um, you know, and, and I think altruistically motivated and, you know, and, and, and what you're, if you're following someone who just, just wants to do right by his people, you know, who, who wants to do the best for his people. He wants to usher them into this, this new era of a planet of the apes, but he's not doing it because fuck humans. He's not doing it because apes are better. He's doing it because this is his family. You know, this is, this is who has become his family. Like obviously he has a literal family too, but uh, all he's doing is trying to trying to trying to make this this world livable for 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 the. I want to deliver know. my people, my my family, to a safe place. Yeah, I just want them and, safe. And, and 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 he accomplishes it. He, I mean, he goes through some serious fucking trials and tribulations along the way. But he does it, you know, with his family members, you know, being put in harm's way. With he himself being put in harm's way multiple times, obviously. And Don, he gets fucking shot and fake dead you know, for a bit and yeah. he gets revived by humans, you know, and, and, and in this one, I mean, dude's put up on, I don't know if it's literally a cross that he's put up on, but you know, it's basic. He's basically getting Jesus up there and in, in the fucking military camp. He's, oh, yeah. he, it's like, it's like, you know, and like shit's get into fucking straight up slavery and like, they're all getting whipped and like, it's, it's like hardcore yeah, shit some bl- that they're all going biblical through. Biblical shit going on. It's definitely some biblical shit. Definitely very biblical uh, shit going on in this. Um, no doubt about it. Um, but but all, the again, Bible's a good story too, right? So, like, I mean, like, with, yeah, you know, it's what? not a bad thing to draw on. It's a it's a relatable thing that people are going <laughs> to relate to. And as we said, with with you know, it's not that these are original ideas. It's not that these are, you know, no one's ever come up with they're a story human before. ideas. It's the fact that right? it's taking taking a story that maybe has been told once or twice before, but but giving it to you in a form that hasn't been given to you before and that makes it a little bit different and a little bit uh rich you know richer for it you know so so i think that that's that's completely valid to to say but but you know it's it, the stories get told and told you know time and time again for a reason and it's because they have very very deep meaning you know that that that, that carries through to a lot of people you know what i mean so uh and and it's 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 very well done and, and war for the planet of the apes i would say um and I think it's just a really fitting finale for for this. Feels it feels different, you know. I think, well, there's literally a thing on the wall that says "Ape Pop- Ape Apocalypse Now." I think at one point, yeah. Just just the, the 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 tone and feel of this movie is different. You get the snowscapes, which make it, I think, feel visually very different from 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 both uh, Rise and Dawn. Well, they make it feel um, like the end of a season, right? I mean, that's that's uh, that's it, yeah. right? But it's uh. But it's, and then I think it's come a, the a, dawn, come the spring of this next thing, Caesar's gone, and you know, and the apes are the apes are free. There's a lot of visual maybe symmetry to, to the story. Maybe, maybe they'll be able to make a kingdom of the planet of the apes. Maybe. Yeah, you know, I, think I liked I liked that uh, <laughs> this movie did a lot of heavy lifting in the very beginning with the text to be like. Here's why this one's called Rise. Here's why this one's called Rise. Yeah, Here's it was why this very, one's called uh, War. Because I feel like they're, they're all, the, the, the titles are a little silly, you know, like like Rise of the Planet of the Apes. It's like, well, are they actually rising? It's it's not really a Planet of the Apes, really, by the end at all. Yeah, Dawn of the it's Planet all very the Apes, fucking so stupid. Maybe. The naming is fucking terrible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel like they didn't really think that far ahead. War is fine. I think War makes sense, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, but at the same time, even like you could almost flip. I feel like some of the titles are interchangeable. I feel like you could have this conversation with Star Wars too, where it's just like, well, you know, like <laughs> one of these movies could like the Phantom Menace could probably be the rise, like the Rise of Skywalker could also be the Phantom Menace or something like that. But here it's like, I don't know. I think Dawn of the Planet of the Apes could be arguably the third one, you know, because the planet of the apes is dawning now that Caesar's sacrifice is making it possible, but also it is a war for the planet of the apes. So it is kind of makes sense because he's at war with the Colonel, but also in the second one, they're kind of at war with humans. You know, the, the, the war has begun. So you could arguably call that one war. 
and and rise probably also works for the third one and the same reason like it's just like it's kind of nonsense so it's just like you just kind of have to chuck that to the side but again i appreciated that the text was like no 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 the 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 rise of the apes has led to blah 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 and it's like all right you at least are like trying to like retrofit this all in a way that that sort of makes some logical sense even though it really doesn't making a cameo to say that the way they named this is in the same vein as stephanie meyer naming twilight because if you're gonna name twilight Next would probably be like midnight or something. Oh, and yeah. Then breaking okay. on. But she says new moon and eclipse, which are two like that doesn't make any sense. Those, would happen, those are those are not one after the other. Hers are not sequential. If they were going that, they should have done, you know, I don't know, dawn, rise, noon. Yeah. Dawn, rise, noon. This one's all right. Rise is first. Rise, rise is first. first. Yes. Rise, dawn, morning. No, Twilight. Hmm. Twilight of the Planet of the Apes. Anyways, so, uh, uh, that's, so yeah, what do you, what, you got anything else to talk about for No, I think War, it's an affordable War, trilogy. trilogy. I think uh, I'm very excited to see. Uh, I think it's interesting uh, because, I mean, we live kind of in an age where, um, you know, it used to be where if you had an IP... And it existed uh, before you could keep it going, right? Because it looks so, it looked poor, you know, it looked old. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, these movies existed in a time where, okay, well, it's passable. We can just keep this going. We don't have to reinvent this. You know what I mean? We can keep it going. Uh, Mm -hmm. Versus like the 1960s Planet of the Apes. Okay, well, we feel the need to reinvent this thing because the thing that came before it looked, you know, looks like it's made in 1960. You know what I mean? We don't have to yeah. do that anymore. We can keep it going. So we can we can propel ourselves off of the pre-existing thing and, uh, you know, have a good thing. Uh, so I'm excited to watch kingdom of the planet of the apes uh we'll see if that title makes sense we'll we'll revisit that subject yeah they're keeping consistent with the shitty ass titles um you know maybe there's a kingdom in it though maybe it makes sense i don't know who's to say what comes after we'll talk empire of the planet of the apes yeah return of the jedi of the planet of the apes oh that's all right return return of the planet of the apes well so the originals i feel like had some good good titles i don't know if they again thematically made sense but we had planet of the apes beneath the planet of the apes maybe there's something underground escape from the planet of the apes that feels like it would make sense conquest of the planet of the apes okay and then battle for the planet of the apes well we already had a war it's kind of like war so we probably don't do battle again yeah i don't know we'll see what they fucking cook up um all right so uh why don't we why don't we rank do a definitive ranking a ranking of the planet of the apes Mm, okay trilogy uh I think you kind of already said yours, but I guess you can go ahead and reiterate it here uh, if you feel strongly about it. You didn't say it out loud. You didn't specify one, two, three, but I think you kind of said I with think, the, I think, the ascending. I think, I think what I'd say was, and you can tell me if I'm consistent with what you're thinking I'm thinking, but I think uh, uh, three, one, two is kind of my deal. Well, maybe one, two, three. Maybe three, two, one. <laughs> those are three different configurations all right let's break this down which one is your favorite and this is not the best this is which is your favorite of the three of the I trilogy think, I, th- I think my favorite and i guess you could arguably say one is better is best but it's not necessarily your favorite but let's just stick with like favorite. which which movie did you like do you like best which i like the three i like three three is right. probably my favorite War is your favorite. All right. And then, so then you'd think after that would be Rise or Dawn. And that's probably a confusing uh, question. I would, number one I, or number I, two. I, yeah. The the James Franco film, I think, has the most heart out of, uh, I would say, three, one, two is what I would okay. say would be the, the best. I think that uh, the three has the most realized storytelling. I think it's the most... Um, it's not that it's the most realized, but I would say that it's the most, uh, like, 
Yeah, I guess realized, I guess. I mean, I, I don't want to say mature, but... um, Three identifies the characters that it's trying to to center a story around and then it 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 fully understands those characters you know uh i think that the first film this is a hard fucking ranking dude the first film <laughs> well, i feel like the reason i asked it i guess in the way that i did uh-huh. is i feel like the way you described it was that they seem to be getting progressively better. You use some sort of staircase. Uh, yeah, uh, I, and I, I stand uh, behind that comparison. I think that, but, um, so I was thinking you were going to say War Dawn One Rise Two Three was your you know, as yeah, like you know Rise is is the lowest ranked, War is the highest ranked, but, and but Dawn is in the middle. At the same but, time, though, I mean, the first film had the high the the most heavy lifting hey. to do. It's your ranking at the end of the day. You can do whatever you want. You know, you, so I mean, that, it's, it's you know. hard to say that the first film is the worst film because the first film, without the first film, you don't have the heights of the two and the three. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, yes. But, you know, I, I guess that's kind of the thing with sequels, though, is they kind of do inherently rely on their predecessors, but that doesn't mean that they are inherently worse at the same time either. So And so um, in that... In that in that sense of of like acknowledging the the strength of the predecessors, I would say that one would arguably be like the 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 best of any trequel thing or not trequel, Jesus Christ, <laughs> of any um, what's my word? Trilogy. Trilogy. Yeah, exactly. Um, the 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 first this first film is. It did such an effective job at, of establishing this trilogy that um, how do you how do you hold the the, the heights of the, the the second and third film against it? You know what I mean? Uh, it did well, such an effective job of establishing the yeah. IP that it's only on those those merits that you can that you can you know give two and three credit. You know. Um, I would say that my favorite film would be three. I enjoyed three the okay. best. Okay. okay. Um, I think one has the most heart. I think it's also the least um, deep. But that yeah. isn't. No, but, I, think, but, I think that's fair. But you know, I think that's. Again, it doesn't mean it's that it, that it, it doesn't necessarily make. I don't. It I don't think that's the right way to in a certain it. sort of way. But. I just think that it just it it tries to uh, the story. That it tries to tell is... I think the ambition, if nothing else, if the you ambition, want to use the staircase, exactly. the, the ambition of the trilogy, I think, grows with each entry for exactly. sure. Exactly, right. And that doesn't necessarily translate to, just because something is more ambitious, it doesn't mean it's better. Zack Snyder's an ambitious director. He's, <laughs> he still turns out dog shit left and right. So, right. you know, like, like ambition is not greatness. But I do think in this in this instance, you can at least see that, you know, once they kind of get their foot in the door, so to speak, with Rise, then the ambitions kind of grow a little bit because it's just like, okay, we accomplished that. What else can we do? You know, and, and it really was with each successive entry was like, we can, maybe we can dig a little deeper. Maybe we can do and something they do. a little different. And they do. And they do. Right. Yeah. So if, if you want to avoid the question entirely, you can just say, War is your favorite. And you know what? They're all fucking great. They're all they're all incredible films. It's not there's not it's not a clear delineation of exactly. one, two, three necessarily. It's, you know, it's in some almost, ways that like uh and more so than and than you know, I I'm not gonna I say, say that because it seems gonna, like you're struggling I'm, to 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 really defend it. Like I'm sometimes not gonna say fall together re- really easily. Definitively that this is one of the best. But what I will say is, is I'm having a hard time uh, delineating uh, the 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 the, um, the lines between each film, right? So I think that sure. it's it's. Well, I mean, I think if nothing else, maybe that just. I, I and I think this is probably one of the best modern trilogies that we exactly have, period right. yes you know where there really isn't a weak link necessarily. And so often in trilogies, it 
tends to be number three that is the weak link, and I think that it's really definitely not true here. Just a, it's um, one whole solid story told. Yeah, and it all. I I think the beauty of this trilogy for me is each film feels independent, unique from each other, but they build so magnificently upon each other. Right. You know? Right. You're right. You're absolutely right. Like Dawn and War can't exist in the way they do without Rise doing all the heavy lifting in the first place of setting up Caesar and setting up the world and the background of everything. But Dawn doesn't necessarily just ride the coattails of, of Rise. It, it, it is very much its own thing, but still furthering that story. And in the same way that War is like kind of its own sort of beast, separate from that, that is a little bit more deeper and introspective than even Dawn was versus Rise. It's still building off of those built like it, it's using the same building blocks that were set up by its predecessors because when you walk in you know caesar you like caesar and it's because of those two movies that you like caesar and so when bad things happen to caesar and caesar feels like a changed individual like and he goes through this story and this arc and the sacrifices that he makes they feel oh so more me- more meaningful because of everything that you've, you've you've been through with caesar you know so watching war for the planet of the apes in a vacuum doesn't probably have as much impact as it does just watching rise into dawn into war uh i will i will 140 percent agree with you on everything you just said yeah and and that said i do think dawn is my favorite of these three but which one's dawn that's the second one um and for me it's because it strikes that effective balance between the human and ape story that both feel compelling and relatable and understandable um but that said i think that there's no wrong answer is, is maybe the, they, maybe that's the point is they're all really, really great. It's not one. Okay. To good moving into one really great. And then like, Oh, they shit the bed. Like that's, that might be a traditional trilogy arc. Like say, I don't know, like the spider and Spider-Man trilogy, James Franco trilogy, James, James Franco, Spider-Man trilogy. <laughs> First one. It's good. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good. Second one is great. It's fantastic third one well that one could have been better you know what i mean like you, no, you see that movies with a lot are, of the dark knight move. trilogy is kind of the same thing like batman begins is really fucking good you might even like batman begins better than than the dark knight everyone loves the dark knight no one really loves the dark knight rises but it's fine you know what i mean so so like the, you, you could see like there's 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 usually some sort of fall off or there's a dip or it picks up, you know, quickly. Like, there's always something where it's just like, oh, they get their shit together, or they lost, you know, they, again, they shit the bed. This one is just, if anything, it was getting better, or at least more confident as it went along. Um, and, uh, and the and, character yeah, is overall. fully realized within the trilogy. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's, yeah. I think that's one of right. the best things. Big thing to highlight is just how, how good Caesar's story is. And maybe that brings me to what I want to say next, which is, Something we haven't said enough two hours, you know, you know, of, of talking about this trilogy is Andy Serkis is the fucking man. He's incredible. Um, yeah, he owns this role. You know, he is kind of the the mocap performance capture kind of guy at this point, where he just does it in a way that no, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's 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 fantastic. I mean, you can tell that it's Andy Serkis again under all the CGI. And you can feel those emotions that that Caesar is feeling, and and, and the nuances of actor, his expressions, dude. like th- those, you know that that is it is CGI that's showing it and bringing it to life. But it's Andy Circus under all that, and it's very much his performance that is driving that character and making you feel that way about that character. You know, so um, Andy Circus was is owed a big ton of credit. I think he's. Uh, I don't know if he's a producer, but I think or like a consultant for Kingdom. So he's like involved in that, even though obviously Caesar's not around, obviously, for the events of that movie, um, which will be interesting to see. Um, a Caesarless Planet of the Apes, but that's so that's a story for another day. But um but big big shout out to Andy Circus, uh, who was my pick for best actor in twenty seventeen, because I I just thought he was brilliant and I and and more particularly where this is just a more broken down, defeated vengeful Caesar than we'd ever seen before. And I thought that was just such an incredible uh, layered performance that we got there. But also shout out to Terry Notary, who is kind of the ape guy on set. Uh, he played Rocket, uh, who, who's his, the bonobo lieutenant. Um, and he's basically the one that like 
showed everyone how to be an ape, like literally, like, you know, like how to do the mannerisms and stuff. I think he did an ape camp, like ape boot camp, I think for Dawn for all the ape performers. Um, but, but shout out to Karen Conoval who played Maurice, Devin Dalton, uh, Toby Kevill, all those actors who, who wore the mocap, who wore the performance capture gear and, uh, and brought these characters to life because at the end of the day, what sucks is they don't get the recognition that they should. Like, obviously, people will recognize Andy Serkis as being a monumental actor, but the awards won't, you know, and, and it's just one of those things where you, when you look at a character and you see Gollum, and you look at a character and you see Caesar, you don't necessarily see Andy Serkis. Like, he's there, you no, look for it, and you, like, you can absolutely look in this, if you look at Caesar almost in any three of these movies, you see Andy Serkis in there, but it's also at the same time not what you're seeing you know you're seeing caesar you are seeing fully caesar you know it's such a it's a really cool way of realizing it of having this fully cg character and yet it's still being a very human performance he is but he's actually he actually looks like andy circus there so it's a little different um so you know it's cool to see andy circus being andy circus i I love that too but but he just he just knows how to bring this technology to life in a way that and and in what movies he's he's he's, he's actually andy circus Black Panther, uh, Age of Ultron is he's the same okay. character in that. So uh, I don't know if that totally counts. Um, I feel like there's another one that uh, he's a mo like an obvious guy. one. That's the point. Well, he, he was this is another example. Snoke in, in Star Wars, where yet again mocap. Um, he was King Kong in Peter Jackson's King Kong. Jesus um, Christ. Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, I was I was like, there's one more like live action role that he had recently that I like couldn't put my you know finger on. Fucking Andor, man, he was incredible in Andor. Yeah, um, he was. So that's what I was. That's what I was trying to try he's to figure out. Incredible. Actor. Oh, and he's Alfred. He's fucking Alfred in the Batman. He's got that Matt Reeves connection, you know. So that, that maybe that's my second shout. It is shout out to Matt Reeves because Matt Reeves is an awesome, awesome director. You know. Obviously, past this, he directed the Batman. He's working on the Batman uh, Part Two, two. And Penguin, all that good stuff. But these two movies are incredible. Prior to this, he had done Cloverfield and Let Me In, which is the Let the Right One In um, American remake, which is which I think is very good too. But Matt Reeves is a very very accomplished director who is clearly someone that like comes into a project with the fucking vision that he can deliver on and he does deliver on. And and these two movies, I think really probably put him on the map in a big, big way that obviously led to him getting the Batman. And now he's probably got carte blanche to do whatever the hell he wants to do in the future carte as blanche. he well should. Um, great cinematography throughout good score, all the other things that we probably would have said at a non spoilers things, I think probably worth throwing out here uh, as, as a, as a last gasp, like, Hey, Top to bottom, movies are great. Performances, directing, writing, you know, generally speaking, just 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 all of it is very, very well done. And 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 again, I I reiterate, I think that I'd have to, you know, I don't have a list in front of me, and I haven't really thought about it too too extensively, but it's gotta be one of the best modern trilogies out there. Absolutely. You know? I mean so it's at least in the conversation and, and probably dominating the conversation to a certain extent. So, um, so yeah, uh, you know, I wouldn't say we had a definitive ranking of the planet of the apes trilogy or anything like that, given the consternation and discussions that we had, uh, trying to parse all that out. But, uh, but, uh, if you, if you, if you are listening to this point and we've spoiled the shit out of this trilogy for you, um, Hey, and you haven't seen these movies, and you haven't seen these movies. Um, hey, they're still worth watching. Is is what I would say. Is definitely, definitely, definitely do yourself a favor and watch these movies. Uh, they are all three streaming on Disney Plus, uh, so that's an easy way that you can watch them right now. Hopefully, they'll be on there for as long as this podcast exists and people listen to it. Um, uh, I own them on Blu-ray. I think there's a 4K set that's out now that's probably worth you know checking out on picking up if you if you'd prefer to watch that way. Um, but, uh, but please, please do yourself a favor and watch these movies, uh, rise of the planet of the apes, dawn of the planet of the apes, war for the planet of the apes. But, uh, but yeah, watch these fucking movies, watch these fucking movies. Uh, Andrew, any, any other final thoughts, final thoughts for you on, on the planet of the apes trilogy? 
No, uh, I think we covered everything. I mean, I think that I think so the, too. the exploration of the, like the duality of the character in like the last movie and like the, they're just, I don't know the progression of the character alone. One character, Caesar's watch, watch, watch these movies for the journey of Caesar so that you yeah, can follow yeah, Caesar. Totally. Uh, I think that's, uh, I think it makes it, even if you've seen it before, even if you haven't, and again, you've heard yeah. the spoilers of this journey. Seeing it is very different from hearing us talking about it. So, so, so do yourself a favor and watch these movies. Absolutely. But uh, I think that's it. I think that's, that's a good me. place to leave it then. So yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, th- I'm going to go ahead and say thank you all for listening. If you enjoyed what you heard, please spread the word. Um, as I said at the top of the episode, this is a timed exclusive episode for our supporters on Patreon. So I will reiterate some of the things I said earlier. Um, if you are supporting us on Patreon, thank you. Um, if you are not, head to patreon.com slash watch review repeat. You can get early access to bonus episodes like this one, and maybe we'll have some other bonus episodes that we might work on in the near future. We'll talk about it. Um, but also, it will get you early access to all of our regular episodes, which, you know, there's usually a fair amount of time between recording, putting it up on Patreon, and getting it out to the regular feed in a nice, cleaned-up, polished version. Uh, so if you want to be the first to, to hear anything that we talk about, um, Patreon is a really, really good avenue. In fact, it is the only and best avenue for it. So uh, again, patreon.com slash watchreviewrepeat. Otherwise, our website's watchreviewrepeat.com for all other watch, review, repeat needs and such. Um, you've got links to all of our episodes there, links to all of our social media platforms that we're on, such as Twitter, where we are at WRRPod, uh, Instagram, we are at Watch Review Repeat. We are on Facebook as well. If you go to facebook.com slash Watch Review Repeat, you can find our page there. Uh, and you can also get into contact with us, which we happily welcome, by sending any questions, comments, or suggestions to Watch Review Repeat at gmail.com. So if you've got something to say, send it our way, whether it's about Planet of the Apes, this trilogy, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, or anything and everything, you know, under the sun. You want Lawrence to talk of about. Arabia. Lawrence of Arabia. Uh, what else did we covered? Lord of the Rings. You know, uh, mm-hmm. we did, we did, we did some epics. You know, hey, just just send it our way. We'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. We're happy to engage in those sorts of things. So, uh, so we encourage it. Uh, our intro and outro tracks: Mechanolith by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. That is licensed under the Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 license. So, what are we doing next? Um, well, because of how late we are in terms of recording this, our next regular episode. Um, is going to be Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. But of course, um, now I think we have to make a theater trip, both Andrew and I, to go see it. We haven't seen it yet, but uh, should be seeing it hopefully soon and hopefully recording on it, not, not you know, before not too long. So we can look forward to our coverage of that, our continued conversation about the yeah. Planet of the Apes uh, and whether Kingdom can live up, you know, to what this trilogy is, you know, set up for this franchise. Hopefully it's, uh, hopefully it's more of the same in the best way possible. Uh, and then on the, bonus episode front um nothing set in stone i won't make any promises but i think we've kicked around the idea of talking about some old fox x-men movies at some point Ooh. so uh we to, man, man, man. yeah well we, we, gotta, we gotta do x-men 97 at some point but that requires me to watch it so, oh, uh, oh my goodness <laughs> we'll get there hopefully at some point too we'll slot it in when i do get the time for it um but yeah, if we could do some Fox X-Men movies, that might be kind of a fun, nostalgic, yeah, totally. throwback sort of series of bonus episodes. One episode seri- at a time? like uh, I don't know. I don't know. That's that's the conversation we probably need to have off air is uh, figuring out how the hell we tackle it and do we skip certain movies? How do we do it? You know, so uh, that's that's probably the fine details we'll have to work out because um, I, don't, I don't really know. But I would enjoy doing. watching an X-Men I think, at the very least one through three. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. And it's like, all right, well, then do we go beyond? Do we do all of them? Like, that's a lot. I don't know. So, um, you know, you got a baby. You got work. I got work. I don't have a baby, but I, I got other shit to do. So, you know, we'll see. We'll figure <laughs> it out. But but if we'll, we'll do some some version of that, I think. Whatever we can fit in and, and make sense. And obviously that is thematically to tie in with Deadpool and Wolverine coming out in a uh, couple months. We've got a little time, but I think if we want to cover more than a few movies, then we'll, we'll probably, you know, need to get on the horse sooner rather than later, but Hey, we'll figure it out. So stay tuned, obviously on some future regular episodes, as we sort out those details, we can announce that. Um, but, uh, but anyway, uh, I'm going to let Andrew take everyone out. Hey, um, 
Take care now. Bye bye then. Ape, not kill. Ape. No.